This story narrated the tale of the strongest man ever Tetsuya who started his journey in a new world after some extremely intolerable situations, like being thrown out in front of monsters without having any powers, leaving no way for him but to keep running for his life. But it couldn't even begin to describe what he suffered so far, so we began from the very beginning in his previous world, Japan. Some bullies were chasing Tetsuya to kill him, for taking away the girl they were after like a hero. Tetsuya wondered at some point just why he was risking his life for a girl he didn't know much about. But when they arrived at a dead end with fences, Tetsuya sent the girl to the other side by leveraging her. He himself got stuck in front of those goons, and they started beating the shit out of him right away. They couldn't tolerate this hero of a guy to act like that even if he was this weak. Tetsuya was glad that he somehow got the girl to the other side. And even if these guys keep kicking his guts now, the girl would at least have a pretty decent chance to be able to run away. The leader of those bullies was pissed off at Tetsuya for wasting his time, and as Tetsuya was about to lose consciousness, everything suddenly disappeared and then a voice got heard saying a welcome for heroes. When he opened his eyes, Tetsuya saw that he was in some sort of king court, and a female named Meme informed them that they had been summoned into another world by her. Tetsuya was shocked to see that it was not only him, but the bullies beating him also got summoned alongside him. Meme didn't expect to have six people summoned when she was planning to invite only four, and the ones who got summoned by mistake were our protagonist Tetsuya himself, and the other one was that girl he saved. But to make things understandable for these guys, Meme detailed them about the human race being on the verge of extinction, so they were summoned here to help them conduct wars. The bullies started yelling out that all of this was crap, and wished to just go back home. Meme told him that she couldn't send them back until they helped them. Now she proceeded on telling them more about this world, that everyone had levels, and the more important thing to notice was the level limit, which was placed differently for each being. Limit level of a person was what determined how much potential a person had. She stated that heroes, which are basically people summoned from another world, have a much higher limit level which meant that they could accomplish in human things here. When Meme checked out one of the bullies, Kaido's level, she found out that he had an incredible limit level of 125. Whereas, Tetsuya was more concerned about just what was going on. Bean came to him to check his level which was unpredictable, considering that he was not planned to be summoned out here. For which, Meme used her appreciation level skill to see his level, and the result was unbelievable, since Tetsuya had a measly level 1 limit, making him the weakest person in this world. The king was extremely mad that he got a defective person from this resource exhaustive summoning art. So, the king instantly ordered a sentence of death for Tetsuya and threw him in the valley of death. Tetsuya was shocked to see he was being killed for just being weak when these guys were the ones to summon him. He tried to talk back to those guys, but before he knew it, everyone was just mocking him for being so weak, even if they didn't know him at all. Only one person out there truly wanted to help him out, which was the girl he saved life of. But it was futile since the knights just took Tetsuya to a cliff which was supposedly connected to the Valley of Death, and threw him down there without even a proper warning. Tetsuya didn't want to die like this, but in this case he didn't have much choice to save himself. But to his surprise, when he fell down a few meters, he landed on a not-so-hard surface and managed to survive the fall. He didn't expect a miracle like this to happen. And upon further analysis, Tetsuya learned that the thing he landed on was something like a giant soft mushroom. Tetsuya was more sure that this world was clearly not so kind to weaklings, and now he had this problem, to find a way out of this valley which was looking pretty impossible. He wondered just how much time he might be spending down here trying to get out, or more likely find a way to live in this place. However, he started to imagine there must be some other stuff related to his world, and doubted if there really was no way to grow stronger than the limit level. Tetsuya tried some blank gestures to see if he could see his skills or something like that, and after three tries, he finally learned of the command to open status. Tetsuya saw that his stats seemed pretty low even if he was unknown to this world. But in this weak stats of his, Tetsuya noticed that he had a skill. He recalled hearing from Meme before that humans don't have skills initially, which meant that his case was definitely different and might be luckier than he thought. But in the next second, he saw some scary goblin-like monsters approaching him with wooden weights to crush their target. The goblins snared at him with a dangerous look, and Tetsuya got puzzled into thinking if he should fight those goblins. But before he could think of the other option, he chose it already, which was to run away because it was clearly a day and night difference for a level 1 to be able to defeat any monsters. The goblins were chasing him at a slightly faster speed than him, but then Tetsuya noticed that he himself was running slower than usual, just because he was a level 1 in this world. He couldn't run that fast at all, 
and eventually, the goblins caught up to him and made him fall down on his face. Tetsuya tried to get the goblins off him, but his efforts proved to be useless when he couldn't move those goblins even an inch. Then while two of the goblins were holding him down, the third one brought the log and hit a loud sixer right in Tetsuya's face. Tetsuya didn't think he could get up anytime soon. But since goblins were after all just some monsters, they kept smashing him ruthlessly like he owed them money. Tetsuya knew that he would die if this kept on for even a few seconds. Then suddenly the goblins stopped only to have a good laugh at him. Tetsuya was terrified from just imagining what might happen to him. Then he noticed while crawling back that there was another pitfall behind him. Tetsuya didn't care how deep this valley was and just jumped down because he wanted to bet his chances on it, rather than just waiting to die as a plaything for goblins. As he fell down some more meters, Tetsuya fell into something like a dense sticky liquid. He was amazed to see he was still alive, but unfortunately this mud-like liquid was smelling extremely terrible. Then he noticed something present in this pool of mud, which looked like the bones of a giant monster like a lizard. Tetsuya was disgusted by just the thought of this mud around him being the rotten body's fluid of this creature, but even so, this saved his life. Then Tetsuya noticed something like a vine dropped from above, which was actually being used by the goblins to come down. It turned out that these goblins were smarter than the other mangas, so Tetsuya started thinking of his ways to escape quickly from this situation. He realized that this corpse might be useful for him if only his skill worked on it. Then he heard a voice asking if he wanted to absorb this corpse, and since Tetsuya didn't really have a choice here, he absorbed the corpse and suddenly many of his stats increased exponentially. The voice informed him that the absorption of the earth dragon was successful. The corpse of the earth dragon disappeared completely along with the rotten fluid around it, and Tetsuya could feel something in him changed. Whereas, a goblin was about to land a sneaky hit on him, to which Tetsuya just turned back and held the goblin with his bare hands. He could feel the immense power in his hands, which was way more than how strong he was just a moment ago. After which, he smashed the goblin into the ground and defeated him. Tetsuya started to learn more about his power from the point that he found, add the status of the corpse, get their skills, and more on how this world works. Tetsuya saw more goblins above the pitfall, so he just jumped with the goblin corpse in his hand and got behind those goblins. His power intimidated the goblins, and since he was holding on to the corpse of one of them, Tetsuya used his skill to absorb that corpse as well and got a little increase in stats. He used the appreciated level skill he got from the dragon corpse, which gave him an idea of the power of the opponents. One of the remaining goblins charged at him in full speed while aiming for Tetsuya's head, and he blocked it with his hands which were strong enough to crush the rock hammer of goblin. Tetsuya was amazed with this much power as he punched goblin's face so hard that the blood splattered on his hand. Tetsuya used his absorbing skill again on that corpse as well, while the feared remaining goblins attacked him after mustering some courage to fight. Suddenly, a giant piece of rock started falling from above, which was actually one of Tetsuya's skills called Meteorite. He got this skill from the Earth Dragon as well, through which crushing these goblins was a piece of cake. Tetsuya wondered if he could increase the size of the rock by increasing his skill level, but either way, corpse absorption was proving to be useful. Tetsuya was grateful for this skill as it would have been impossible for him to get stronger as a level 1 otherwise. But more than that, he was more thankful to the dragon corpse which was luckily just where it should have been. Tetsuya learned from his experience till now that he must kill in order to survive and raise his power, after which he planned on taking revenge from those who treated him like a defective one. He wanted to get his revenge on those guys, and at that time, some skulls and a big eye appeared in his shadow without him noticing it. But not too long after that, Tetsuya found him running around in the valley while encountering various monsters in his way. He didn't think anything was ever fair around here, since Tetsuya started to encounter high-level monsters like Lightning Boar right off the bat. So, when he tried to run away from the Lightning Boar, the boar hit him with a thunder strike which paralyzed Tetsuya's body and made it numb. Tetsuya realized that this lightning was actually the skill of this boar monster, and now that he couldn't move his body, the boar tackled Tetsuya. But instead of Tetsuya being hurt from the hit, the monster boar got squished from the impact of its own attack and died. Tetsuya was surprised and confused about what really happened. But even so, he absorbed the lightning boar's body realizing that his high defense level might have helped him. However, he was now getting tired from having to run around all the time, and wanted to find a place to rest. He looked around the hollow spaces in the valley, and when he went there, he saw a stream of water. Tetsuya went there and washed his face from the water while worrying about how he was going to keep up with this hell every day. 
he figured that he would die at this rate. Tetsuya recalled his memory of the previous world, where he used to work at a black company, which meant that they didn't provide any health or social security. Tetsuya had to join a company like that, because he used to be a game addict who usually ended up getting poor scores in the exams. So no normal company offered him any jobs. And the day when he was summoned, he started it by leaving the job and coming back to home wandering around, between which, he ended up running into some criminals. After which, the rest is known and now that he was trapped in this valley despite having an overpowered skill, the most important thing for him right now was to not die in a pathetic world like this. Then a black cat appeared behind him while crawling on the ground. He wondered what a cat was doing here, and more importantly, it looked pretty much hurted from that visible weakness. Tetsuya figured that he should be careful even if it was just a cat. Then the cat tried to tell him something by pointing above. Tetsuya took some time to understand her, and the moment he looked above, he saw there was a giant spider crawling on the ceiling of this cave-like place. The spider was called an absorbent spider, which emits a special thread known for being strong enough to carry even large creatures. Then while Tetsuya was just learning about the absorbent spider, it attacked him with a sticky spider web which got attached to his arm. Tetsuya felt strange from that sticky web, so he quickly tried to detach it from his hand, but it was stitched too tightly. And suddenly, he felt as if his strength was being drained from his body through that spider thread. His health and other stats started to decline rapidly, and that was when the name of Absorbent Spider made sense to him. Tetsuya guessed that the cat must have also been attacked by this spider, since it was looking like its strength was drained. So, to counter the spider, he tried to use the meteorite skill to call off a rock to hit that spider. But since the space between spider and the ceiling was too less, the meteorite skill couldn't be activated. Then he recalled being hit by the lightning before from that crazy boar, so while thinking that he should give it a try, Tetsuya attacked and used the thunderbolt skill trying to aim at that spider. But the spider was so agile that it easily dodged a couple of thunderbolts by Tetsuya just by moving too fast around the cave. Tetsuya was starting to feel hallucinations since he was running out of energy pretty quickly from that draining. He still couldn't get his arm free from the sticky web. Then a thought crossed his mind making him think that he should give it a try before his MP got drained completely. Tetsuya used his thunderbolt skill on the spider web attached to his arm this time. And just as he predicted, the lightning strike hit the spider directly and made it fall down with paralysis. Tetsuya took this chance and jumped right off at full speed towards the spider. And before the spider could get into senses, Tetsuya landed a super stomp with his legs and crushed the head of the spider. He observed that this spider must have had just low stats aside from its speed, since it shattered with just his kicks. It was surely a challenging battle for him, and to end it properly, Tetsuya absorbed the absorbent spider and got up to check the cat. He thanked the spider for warning him about the spider before, and it made him want to try helping it out. But he wasn't sure what to do to make the cat feel better, and to give it a try, Tetsuya took some water in his hands and offered it to the cat who was happily drinking the water from his hand. Tetsuya hoped for the cat to recover soon from that drain, and while the cat was drinking water, he felt the soft fur of the cat until Tetsuya got touched by the tail of the cat to his head which felt pretty bigger than before. When he opened his eyes, he saw that the cat was looking a bit different, and to his surprise, the cat had turned into a demi-human out of the blue. She was still licking the water from Tetsuya's hands, then Tetsuya shook off his hand asking what was she trying to do now. The cat asked him to let her drink some more water, for which she would allow him to pat her fur. Tetsuya asked her why she was looking like this, and who she was in the first place. The cat Lenya realized that she was finally back to her original form. She thanked Tetsuya for the help, and then introduced herself to him as a beastman. Tetsuya was not that amazed to see a cat beast, since he had already seen many strange things at this point. She asked him for his name, and when he introduced himself to her properly, Lenya started dancing around to express she was glad to meet him. Tetsuya could see that Lenya might have already recovered now, whereas Lenya called Tetsuya amazing to be able to defeat that spider by himself. However, she wanted to know why Tetsuya was in a dangerous place like this. He told her that there were many reasons behind that, so keeping them aside, he asked her if she knew a way out of this place. She replied that she wasn't sure herself about how she got here, since in her case, when she got conscious she was just here in this valley of death, as if she didn't recollect having memories before that. But since Tetsuya just saved her life, she offered to help him out in finding a way to escape this place. She asked him if he wanted to know anything else, because she wanted to help him out with anything for being her benefactor. But Tetsuya had been more focused on wondering about something else, and asked her if beast men had ears only on their heads. He asked her if she had ears on the side of her head like humans such as himself. 
Upon hearing this, Lenya started acting embarrassed because for beast men, the ears around head were too private for them. So she called him a pervert for mentioning them. Whereas Tetsuya was shocked that something as simple as this could be a bad question. He told her that he won't ever ask something like this again, because he really wasn't aware of this being so private. He apologized to her a couple of times until she decided to forgive him. Lenya believed his words and said sorry for yelling at him like that. She wanted to give him something as a token of thanks, but didn't have anything to give for. Tetsuya told her it was fine and he didn't need anything, whereas Lenya gave it some thoughts and then quickly held his hands as she got an idea of just where to take him. Tetsuya asked her where she was taking him, to which she answered that they would now go back to her house to introduce him to her teacher. Tetsuya agreed to her and asked on the way just what kind of person her teacher was. Lenya told him that her teacher was a great person. Meanwhile, somewhere in another hollow cave, somebody was not able to calm down because they were too worried about Lenya, since it was too dangerous out there. It seemed to be the teacher of Lenya who was angry from Lenya being out there for too long. Now back to Tetsuya and Lenya, they seemed to be near her place, but in the way, a deadly monster seemed to have appeared, which made them concerned while looking at it from behind a rock. Lenya stated that they have to cross through this place to get to her home, but it was not looking that well to Tetsuya since this poisonous lizard monster was clearly a bad sign for them. Lenya told him to just leave it to her, which got him curious into thinking if Lenya had any secret plan or skills to back up for it. Lenya replied that she would just go and punch the lizard, which confirmed Tetsuya's doubts that Lenya was clearly a stupid person. He told her that engaging in a hand-to-hand -hand combat with that monster would be too dangerous, because it was surrounded by something like a poisonous lake, which was basically his body fluid. He noticed a monster's corpse in the poison lizard's mouth, which made him realize that the poison of this monster was strong enough to melt its prey. He told Lenya that they should avoid fighting this monster, and asked if there was another way out. She told him that there was one other way, but at this time of the day when night was close, that path was also dangerous because of the various frightening undead spirits that roam in that place, which was why she never got out at night. Tetsuya wanted to consider not going towards that path because he feared undead, so Lenya asked him if they could just jump over the lizard. He replied that would be too risky because from the looks of it, the lizard could also shoot them in the air. It brought him down to one conclusion that he would need to use one of his skills. He opened his status to check out which one to use, since he was low on MP after the fight with Spider. Among his set of skills, he didn't want to risk using lightning which would only paralyze the lizard, whereas the thread skill seemed to be vulnerable against poison or fire. Then after thinking a bit, he remembered something else about spiders. Then Tetsuya asked Lenya if she was confident in her speed, and then it was decided that Lenya would go to divert the attention of the lizard. She went and made a sound so that the lizard would look at her, after which, she tried poking it to come after her. Then once her plan worked, as the poison lizard started running towards her, Lenya increased her speed to make sure luring the lizard somewhere according to the plan. She kept taking the lizard further, but eventually, she fell down unexpectedly showing how dumb she was. Lenya was now an easy target for the lizard. But as the lizard approached, Tetsuya had to step in earlier than they planned and used his thread skill to make a web on the path, then got out of the way with Lenya. The poison lizard ended up getting caught up in that spider web, and once it was trapped, Tetsuya was glad the spider thread was working quite well. Now, he just needed to use the meteorite skill upon that lizard to finish it off, but he needed to wait a bit before he could use it since the mana recovered at a slow rate. However, he didn't seem to have much time because the spider threads were starting to melt, making him wonder if he should use Thunderbolt and run away, but that was too risky with the poison swamp around them. While he was trying to figure something out, Tetsuya saw that the lizard was about to attack them with poison, and since he couldn't move much due to being attached to the spider web, Tetsuya held Lenya in his arms while taking the hit on his back. The poison rubbed off his right shoulder with a direct hit, and when Lenya saw it, he told her it was just a scratch even if it was clearly painful as hell. The lizard got out of the spider web pretty soon, and just in time, Tetsuya's MP recovered enough to use the meteorite skill. The lizard approached to attack him with full force, and Tetsuya decided to bet everything to his meteorite skill. And in the next moment, a giant rock fell upon the lizard and crushed it into a pitfall. Tetsuya was relieved that everything went well, while Lenya was joyful about their victory against a tough obstacle. He muttered that this action of theirs was really dangerous, and now he started to feel exhausted. He figured it might be because his skills were abnormal for a human to use, but either way, now that he needed to finish this mess, Tetsuya went down there to the poison lizard's corpse. He went there thinking that it might help him out to absorb this poison lizard as well, and just like he expected, 
When the absorbing process was over, the swamp was cleared and next he wanted to know if he could absorb something else than a corpse. He went and ripped off a piece of a poisonous mushroom. While Lenya tried to warn him that her teacher said never to eat anything from this place, she tried to make him spit it out, but the poison of the mushroom didn't have any effect. After that, when they managed to get out of the cave, a loud groaning sound came from the valley. Tetsuya wondered what it could be. While Lenya had a pretty good idea once she saw the starry night sky, she knew that at this time of night, this groaning sound could only mean only one thing, and that thing came closer behind them each second. It was the dangerous spirit of death, which had been roaming around this valley of death for centuries. Lenya and Tetsuko were scared to death from the sight of this spirit, and she asked if Tetsuya could absorb it since it was also kind of dead. He replied it wasn't kind of dead but their death if he were to even get closer to it, because Tetsuya couldn't absorb what he couldn't touch. Lenya tried taking a stone and threw it at the ghost spirit. The stone went through the spirit, and she told Tetsuya it was impossible to touch this one which was pretty obvious to him already. So, this drama or hers only delayed their running time. Then Lenya told him that this spirit couldn't get inside the hollow spaces in the valley. But while they kept running at their full speed, the ghost spirit was about to catch up with them until Lenya decided to use her trump card since there was no option left. She activated her beastification mode, which turned Lenya into a big black cat and she asked Tetsuya to quickly get on her back. Tetsuya had many doubts about Lenya's form. But since he didn't have the luxury of thinking right now, he quickly held on to her, and Lenya increased her running speed extremely fast. The spirit was still trying to catch up with them, while Tetsuya was amazed to see that Kenya's speed was way faster than that spirit. They managed to make a gap between them and the spirit, as Lenya informed him that they were close to her house. After that, they arrived at a hollow space which looked more like a dead end to Tetsuya. He asked her if this was really the right place, then Lenya told him about there being a hidden door in the wall up ahead. She went there and tried to scratch the rock to move it, but couldn't open it for some reason. Tetsuya told her that she should try transforming back to her original form first. Then Lenya poofed and became the small little cat she was. She told him that the beastification ability she used was very exhausting, and that there was a handle in the door. Tetsuya was damned after seeing it. This hidden door was a sliding door, although a bit heavier than he expected. When he got inside, it was a room with a make-do bed and other stuff like a dining table. Tetsuya didn't expect there to be a house like this in the Valley of Death. Then they heard a voice calling out Lenya in anger. It was her scary teacher's voice yelling at Lenya for being so late. But to our surprise, Lenya's teacher turned out to be a small old teddy bear, which actually walked and spoke while also caring about Lenya like her mother. However, the teddy was confused after seeing a human out there with Lenya in his hands, while Tetsuya was even more confused to see a real talking teddy bear. Teddy was anxious after seeing a human in her house and asked what he planned on doing with Lenya. Tetsuya tried to explain the situation, but Teddy was too impatient and started climbing on his head to put Lenya down. She claimed Lenya was her precious family, and since Tetsuya can't seem to explain himself, he just put Lenya down and Teddy took her behind. The Teddy told him there was nothing here of value, so he should leave. Tetsuya tried to tell Teddy that he wasn't here to take anything, but nothing he said worked on Teddy and she misunderstood that Tetsuya was some guy who liked torturing beastmen. Lenya got conscious and muttered that Tetsuya was just helping her out, after which, the teddy sat down and heard Tetsuya's story. She was surprised to hear that they encountered a poisonous lizard and even a spirit of death. The teddy thanked Tetsuya for taking care of Lenya, and he was glad to see the misunderstanding was cleared now. Lenya stated that her teacher was kind, while Tetsuya was wondering which beastmen looked like a stuffed animal. But when he learned with appraisal skill that the stuffed toy was actually an elf with make meek samifers with a level limit of 85, Tetsuya was left pretty taken back, whereas the teddy meek was curious about his reaction. She asked him if he just did an evaluation, and like her race suggested, meek knew that this evaluation was a rare skill which was used by intelligent dragons and superior demons. Tetsuya didn't know this skill was so rare, so she asked just who in the world he was. But after seeing his nervous face, she understood that he must have his reasons. Meek didn't want to disrespect the favor she owed him, so she started with introducing herself properly that she was Meek Samifers, and the reason she was looking like this right now was because she was cursed, and used to be an elf princess. Tetsuya couldn't have believed she was an elf if he hadn't used evaluation on her. Meek offered him that he could stay the night at their place. Tetsuya was thankful and all for her offer, but he wanted to know if there was any way to get out of this valley of death. She informed him that would be tough, because the exit of the valley was about a 30-day walk, and it was impossible to avoid the spirit of death. 
whereas, the second way out was by defeating a powerful golem which was blocking the route to the outside. She stated it would have been a piece of cake for her to beat that golem in her original form, but she couldn't do anything because of the curse. Meek said they wanted to leave this place just like him. Then Lenya suggested that she could beat the golem with Tetsuya's help if Meek agreed to train him for some time. If it goes well, then they would be able to get out of the valley. Meek wasn't sure about that, so Lenya told Tetsuya to show Meek her status which would make her believe in him. Tetsuya didn't expect he could show his status to others. Meek didn't think his status could be that impressive to change her mind, but she was shocked the moment when she saw his level 1 limit, while having crazy status for his level. Not only that, but he also acquired skills which humans weren't supposed to have in the first place. Meek expressed her curiosity to see a skill like this body absorption. He told her about his skill in more detail, that it let him absorb the stats and skills of corpses, which was also the reason why he managed to survive the Valley of Death so far. Lenya asked her master what were her opinions now, and she replied that Tetsuya could increase his stats and definitely become strong enough to defeat the golem. So, without any delay, she accepted him as her student and started training him with a sword play. Meek was a strict teacher right away, and asked him to do a thousand swings in the first try. The next part of the training included going out and fighting monsters to gain more combat experience. Although the goblins she asked him to beat were pretty small and weak, she told him to use this to learn that enemies won't have mercy on him regardless of the strength gaps. So, just to do what she asked of him, Tetsuya went and hit those goblins with his sword and took out all three of them vaguely, since it was pretty easy. Meek told him that he needs to be more serious about fighting with more force and precision. She told him that he would need to be powerful himself as well, because just having powerful skills won't mean anything unless he achieves that. Meek told him to go and refine himself through daily training, because it would also help him gain better control of his abilities. Meek stated that now he had her, she would turn him into a warrior in no time. Lenya was happy to see her master's big claims, then Meek told him that there was a power level above a certain level which could only be possessed by those who have the greatest strength. Tetsuya asked out of curiosity which level it was, to which Meek replied it was a level of 90 that once a person crosses it, he becomes strong enough to destroy an entire nation by himself. Usually, a person surpassing that was the demon lord, or in rare cases, a summoned hero from another world. Tetsuya knew that term sounded familiar. He asked in a low voice, how powerful would a person be if they had a level limit of 125? Meek replied that level was sounding ridiculous just in numbers, and if there was really anyone with that much strength, then they would be monsters capable of destroying the whole world by themselves. Which meant that those other humans summoned here in this world were a bad sign for the whole world. Later that night, Meek asked him to go and take a bath while she cooked dinner for them. While Tetsuya was taking a bath, he recalled how he could be so relaxed even if he was here in this valley of death. He wondered who Meek actually was, but keeping that aside, he used light magic to brighten up the place around him. He was actually thankful to Meek for somehow making things livelier around him, and also for teaching him various things like controlling the output of his magic to conserve MP. He had learned a lot on how to fight and survive in this world, but for some reason the more he learned, he realized that Kaido who got a level cap of 125 was seriously messed up, and he didn't want to ever run into those guys again. Tetsuya wondered just how many bodies he would need to absorb to match that power level. He didn't think that he could possess a power enough to destroy entire countries, but regardless of that he just shut his brain for a second to take a deep bath by taking his head lower into the tub. Then at the same time, he noticed Kenya also jumped into the water upon which he screamed out loud. Tetsuya asked her just what she was doing here, and hearing them making ruckus, Meek also came into the bath. Tetsuya told her there were no problems, except Lenya suddenly entering his bath, whereas Lenya just replied she wanted to take a bath quickly before dinner. Meek stated it wasn't a big deal to his surprise, and to make it even weirder, Lenya asked Master to join them as well. Meek quickly threw her apron and decided to enter the bath with them, making sure to declare to Tetsuya to not get excited. Seeing her, he was feeling dumber himself after witnessing a stuffed toy saying all that, then all three of them took a bath. Lenya asked Meek to wash her bath, for which she just rubbed herself with the soap and started rubbing herself on Lenya's back. Tetsuya couldn't believe just what the heck he was looking at right now, then Lenya offered to wash his back as well. He tried to decline but either way she insisted until he let her do it. But when Lenya saw his back, her attention fell upon the scar on his back, which he claimed was not a big deal. He told me that the wound was healed pretty much at the same time but the scar remained for some reason. She said sorry for causing trouble to him, and Meek realized she could really trust Tetsuya. She called him as a member of their family now, 
and hearing that made him feel a little warm. Then Lenya asked him if he could wash her hair, to which he agreed but when he tried to be lazy in doing that, his hands ended up near Lenya's ears. Lenya screamed that Tetsuya was again trying to touch her ears, and Meek also got alerted while calling him a pervert at the same time. She claimed that humans were not trustworthy after all, including Tetsuya, and that their lively time together kept going on. After some days passed, Tetsuya was not far from being strong enough to take down the golem. Meanwhile, Lenya was doing training on her own, just kidding. Meek gave Tetsuya his final test to complete his training, which was to defeat the demon named Flame Weasel of 36 level limit. Tetsuya asked her if this was really the last test for him, to which Meek agreed since this demon was the right choice to test out just how much Tetsuya learned in all this time. Tetsuya approached the demon to fight, whereas the flame weasel shot a fireball at him but Tetsuya didn't stop charging in the way, while dodging all those fireballs shot at him. He kept his concentration on the incoming attacks, while trying to find an opening, and once he was close enough to land a critical hit, Tetsuya smashed the flame weasels back with his sword without having that much difficulty. Meek told him he was excellent in that fight, and she expected this much from her student. Meek started coming closer to Tetsuya who still had a serious expression. Then he called out to Meek to not come any closer because the flame weasel launched another fireball, and this time, it was directed at Meek. She managed to dodge it in time, and saw for herself that this flame weasel was still alive. The flame weasel charged at Meek at full speed, and Tetsuya had to come in and try to block it with his bare hands. She didn't want Meek to suffer any damage, while the flame weasel was not making it any easier for Tetsuya. Tetsuya showed some quick thinking there and used his acid attack, which he picked up from the poison lizard before. The poison lizard was strong enough to melt down the whole flame weasel despite its flames, and this time Tetsuya managed to defeat it for real. Meek quickly came running to check if he was okay and Tetsuya apologized to her for not being able to finish it in one hit like she taught him. Meek admitted that it was some of her fault as well, while Lenya called her master a bit careless there. Lenya brought the corpse of a flame weasel to Tetsuya, and he thanked her for that. And now that his last test was cleared, Tetsuya and others were finally happy to be thinking that they would be spending their last day here in this valley of death before getting out. She felt weird that now they might have to say goodbye to each other once they get out, after being so long together. Meek asked Tetsuya what he would be going to do once he got out of this valley, to which he replied that he hadn't given it any thought yet. He just hoped that he found her stronger enough someday to be able to take revenge on whoever was included in throwing him down here. Meek didn't think Tetsuya would be the type to have revenge. He admitted it was a dangerous idea to him, but he still wanted to eradicate those who treated him like garbage bags they could just kick and throw. Tetsuya was aware that he still didn't have enough strength to take them on, so Lenya got into his t-shirt, and he asked her to not sleep there every day before it was uncomfortable for him. Whenever she slept like that, he always ended up waking with a stiff back. She refused to get out because it was a comfortable place for her, and Lenya had decided to sleep only there. Meanwhile, Meek was having fun looking at them being so peaceful, like father and daughter. Lenya started jumping around thinking about that, and since that was the case, Meek claimed she would be Lenya's mother in that case. Tetsuya stated that would make them look like a couple, to which Meek replied she didn't care about that because if he accepted her like this, then she would happily marry him. Tetsuya was clearly not down to marrying a stuffed bear for a wife. Then Lenya reminded Meek that she was actually a grandmother. Meek got mad after hearing that, as she claimed that she just turned 81 which wasn't that much in her perspective. She planned on breaking her curse no matter what, and then make Lenya see how beautiful she was. Lenya felt a little down and then asked if they would say goodbye when they leave this valley for real. She felt sad just from the thought of having to say goodbye. Then Meek told her that she had no intention of leaving her. Besides, she would always be worried if she left Lenya alone. Hearing this made Lenya cry, as Meek added that she couldn't abandon Tetsuya either because he was currently just trying to get stronger, and she wanted to keep teaching him more things. Tetsuya figured that he would still be a rookie even after getting out of here, so he would definitely need Lenya and Meek with him. Lenya was glad to see they would be together now even after getting out, and then she claimed that when she feels happy, she gets sleepy and so she slept just like that with a half good night. Tetsuya also fell asleep and Meek noticed that he had been hiding his hands which were badly burnt from before. She understood that he didn't want her to feel bad, and Meek understood that she should have been more careful. Meek decided to take responsibility for this scar for the rest of her life, and in the whole time she had been in this curse in the last 60 years, Meek hadn't met someone as wonderful as him. So, she put her hands on his hand and wished to always be by the sides of her disciples. Meek's true beauty was glanced at this moment, and they slept.
Next day, Tetsuya went into the cave to hunt down more monsters to raise his stats, and he noticed after absorbing another goblin that he didn't feel any different after absorbing the goblin at this point. Meek told him it was a good sign, since it meant that his stats have risen so much that absorbing a goblin merely increases anything. Meek couldn't help but still be amazed to see Tetsuya's status have kept rising constantly so far, despite the fact that it kept getting harder for others. Then Lenya got an idea and said they should take Tetsuya to a cemetery and make him stronger. Meek called her stupid, because she hated even the thought of this idea because she didn't want Tetsuya to act like a necromancer and disrespect the dead. She made it clear that Tetsuya could only absorb those who get killed by either of them. She told him not to scavenge on abandoned bodies, then he told her that the first corpse he absorbed was left at the bottom of the valley. Meek couldn't argue with that since it saved his life, so she stated it was an exception. Lenya called her rules garbage, then Meek told them to shut up because they were now crossing the path where the exit was. The moment they got out of the cave, Tetsuya saw that there was a giant golem of level 46 guarding the exit. It was really way bigger than any of the monsters they've encountered so far, and made Lenya wonder if they could really beat something this huge. Meek assured them that she knew how they could defeat this golem, so all there was left was to show their teamwork and leave the Valley of the Dead for forever. The strategy to fight the golem was pretty simple, that all three of them will attack first, which is clearly a dumb strategy but they were prepared to give it all of themselves. Lenya was in her beast form which would last 10 minutes, so that means they must defeat the golem within that time. Now with this plan, the fight for their freedom began against the Golem Guardian. First off, the Golem launched a punch at them, which was strong enough to shatter the ground they were standing upon. Fortunately they dodged in time, and Meek told them they would need to stay consistent in attacking in this battle. He asked how they could defeat something like this monster, to which Meek replied they needed to aim to destroy the heart of the Golem, which was basically the red core in front of them. Tetsuya agreed and he shot his fire all skill pickup up from that flame weasel while aiming at the core, but Golem used its hand to block it without any trouble. Tetsuya figured that rock body was not for nothing, so he must find a way to destroy that crazy defense. The Golem was making sure not to make this fight easy for them, then Tetsuya tried to use his meteorite skill, but the distance between the Golem and ceiling was too small to use it. Aside from that, Lenya stated now they shall only stick to the original plan to attack the core. Lenya used her super fast speed to distract the golem while Tetsuya was on a fence from his side. Lenya jumped around the golem's body with her agility and after catching its attention, she mocked the golem to go and try to get her. The golem seemed to react to her poking, so it started attacking more on Lenya's side, but she was too quick to dodge all those rock punches, so Lenya was a good dodger overall. She told the golem it couldn't hit her even if she was standing still, but when she jumped into the air to jump at golem's head, the golem was completely immersed into attacking her. Meek told Tetsuya it was now his turn to attack, but when he tried to hit the core with a powerful swing, suddenly a barrier stopped him in his way. Tetsuya and others didn't expect a barrier at all, and now their priority suddenly shifted to figure out just how to destroy that barrier. Meek commanded them to fall back and regroup, while the golem's offensive attacks got sharper. Golem hit the ground so hard that it got uneven, and made three of them lose balance on their footing. Meek asked them if they were okay, then Lenya let out a troubled sound since she was stuck in the rocks. Meek tried to get Lenya out of there quickly, but she didn't have the strength to do so, while the golem approached them. Lenya warned Meek about the golem, but the golem already launched a heavy stomping attack with his rock leg. Although, the golem's leg seemed to have stopped in its way, which surprised even the golem. This miracle happened because Tetsuya got himself under the golem's foot and kept it above their heads. In that state, he used his fireball magic to release Lenya and with a blast from that hitting the rocks above her, finally moved Lenya and Meek out of the golem's stomp. Meek stated it was a really violent way to do things. Then she saw that Golem's leg was way near the ground, making them think that it got Tetsuya with its power. Meek was the first one to haste towards the Golem's leg and try to hit it multiple times while crying out for Tetsuya to come out of there. Then Golem's leg started to move back up slightly, and to Meek's surprise, Tetsuya seemed to be using his acid shot. He asked Meek to get away from here, while he pushed the Golem's leg with his full power and the acid shot combined. He was truly marvelous in terms of willpower to have held the golem's leg all by himself, while showing some quick thinking there. He managed to push the golem back. Meek was impressed to see Tetsuya's throw the golem on its back on the ground. She told Tetsuya it was now his chance to finish off the golem, but he seemed to have suffered extreme damage from that last action. She shouted for Tetsuya to hang in there, because if he were to lose consciousness here, he would never regain it. Whereas the golem started to regenerate its broken parts, while Tetsuya was still having trouble. 
Meek knew she must do something about this, but with the limitations of the curse, she did the only thing she could do, and climbed up the golem's hand to take some of its attention away from Tetsuya even if it was just for a short time. She shouted out from the head of golem that they could beat it, and he must use his meteorite right now. She reminded him that his meteorite had leveled up so it had a pretty decent chance of working. Meek kept encouraging Tetsuya, and he started to get up slowly even if his body was screaming in pain. He didn't want to give up here, then Meek noticed something huge above her, which was actually the meteor way larger than the ones Tetsuya used to have before. The meteor this time was just as big as the golem, so Meek quickly got out of there and when the golem's barrier got in contact with the meteor, it broke down from the extreme hit. Tetsuya managed to hit the golem's core with his meteor, while Lenya got all three of them out of the dangerous area. They finally managed to defeat the golem, and Tetsuya was relieved it went well in the end. Lenya and Meek were relaxed now that things calmed down, then they noticed the golem's body being absorbed by Tetsuya. They asked him if he was okay, to which he replied that he was feeling a bit better after absorbing the golem. Tetsuya got many stats up from golem, then Meek congratulated the two of them for doing such a good job. Tetsuya thanked the two for the help, without which he would have never been able to achieve this, especially the last save of Lenya, which managed to get him out of those dangerous rock slides. Meek was proud of them, while thinking that it would have been easier if only the golem didn't have a barrier on it. Tetsuya stated it was fine now that they won, after which a door formed in the wall ahead of them. They figured it must be the exit from here they could get out of this valley of death. Then Meek sensed some sounds coming from that gate, and in a few moments something came out of that place which looked like a strong black knight, which was pretty strong just from the looks as a new enemy showed up in front of the tired three. This new enemy of theirs seemed pretty intimidating, and not only that, Tetsuya told her that he couldn't use his evaluation on this opponent. And if he couldn't see the level of this knight, it meant that this knight must have some extraordinary status which was dangerous for them. She stated that this knight might be even stronger than level 100 to be able to nullify the identify skill of his. Tetsuya felt the pressure of how he could do something against an opponent like this, and at this rate it was useless even if the exit was right there in front of him. Then he noticed that this knight for some reason didn't look like it was going to attack him, and thought that maybe it could speak to him. Tetsuya told this knight that he just wanted to get out of this valley and then the knight offered his hand to him. Tetsuya wondered if this knight wanted to shake hands with him at first, while Meek warned him that this knight had too many unknowns so they must not let their guard down. Tetsuya knew that he didn't have any other choice but to shake the hand of the knight, otherwise who knows what would happen after that. Meek asked him what he was trying to do now, then Tetsuya told her that this knight was actually trying to do a thumb fight with him. Meek didn't know just what this thumb fight was, and hearing that, Tetsuya replied it was a game from back in his world played just for fun. Lenya teased her master for not knowing this much, then Meek circled her out of sulking. This was when Tetsuya noticed that if even the elf queen with all sorts of knowledge didn't know of thumb fighting, then that must mean this concept was out of this world for her too, which meant that this knight might have some connection with his world as well. Then he noticed something dark coming out of the knight's hands, which looked like a couple of skeletons and bones of various undead. The dark shadow kept growing bigger by the time and suddenly he found his consciousness being pulled into a dark place. When he looked into some distance in this dark place, he saw a large eye with spiral pupils, while in the real world, the knight got closer to Tetsuya who was lost in his consciousness with this eye. Suddenly, Tetsuya had his eyes turned spiral for a moment as well, then the next thing he knew, he was being called out by Meek who tried to keep shouting his name for a response. Suddenly, when Tetsuya gained consciousness, he saw that the knight was gone and it was just Meek behind him who was worried about him. Tetsuya said he was alright, and asked where did that knight go, to which she replied that the knight disappeared without any trace which was pretty strange considering how intimidating it was. Tetsuya was about to say that he didn't have any recollection of the past few seconds, but suddenly he felt his right hand was too hot, and when he looked at it, there was a spiral sign on the back of his hand. Meek asked him what was wrong, and he told her there was something on his hand, but when he tried to show her, the symbol he saw just now disappeared as if it was never there. Meek told him if he really saw something on his hand which now disappeared, then it must be some kind of curse or something. Tetsuya wasn't so sure about it since he only saw it for a mere fraction of a second. Then he mentioned having smelled something from his right hand. Meek asked Lenya to try smelling his hand, and when she took a sniff, Lenya immediately screamed in disgust because the smell of Tetsuya's right arm was too much for her. She felt like her nose would break if she were to smell it anymore, while Meek asked her just what she smelled. Meek asked her to try smelling his hand again to be sure, but Lenya didn't want to smell that ever again. 
She told Tetsuya to keep away from her, which made Meek say that she felt like Lenya was in her rebellious daughter phase. Meek asked him to put a cloth around his hand, which might be better until they get his hand examined. Tetsuya agreed to do just that after they got out of the valley, and Meek asked her to inform her if anything odd happens. Lenya now tried to get near him after he put cloth around his hand, and now, they were all set to get out of this valley of death. After they got out of the valley, the first scene they witnessed was pretty unexpected as Tetsuya saw many corpses of lizard men down on the ground, which made their escape from the valley not that well. Meek was happy to have come out until Tetsuya told her about the sea of corpses beneath them. Meek told him that from the looks of it, it seemed like lizard men were fighting against someone which was pretty normal according to her. Tetsuya wondered just where she got her normal common sense, after which Meek filled him in about the area they were in. It was currently located in between all territories, which could also be called the neutral lands. She asked him to take a look up ahead, and there he saw some goblins as well, which used to scavenge on these corpses in the neutral lands. Meek told him this was what she meant by acting like a necromancer, and since he was her disciple right now, she did not want him to partake in such wretched acts. He told her that he understands what she means by that, the Lenya called Meek's ideals as nonsense. Meek got angry after hearing that while Lenya said she didn't recall any memories before meeting Meek. Meek told them to stop chit-chatting about useless things and should head to the nearest town. After they kept walking through side by side of this battlefield, Meek thought it was strange there were only lizardmen corpses down there. According to her, the closest domains from here should be the humans domain and the beastmen domain. From her point of view, she doesn't think humans have enough power to wage wars with others right now. Although, what she looked at was clearly a one-sided massacre so it was possible there might actually be something odd with humans right now, making it all possible to attack at such a large scale. Meanwhile, in other beastmen territory, their lord's castle was being attacked by someone and it seemed like they were unable to keep their enemy behind. Their lord felt helpless in front of that force, which far surpassed them in physical prowess which they were known for. The Beast King didn't think he would see a day where they would suffer defeat at the hands of a species like humans. Whereas, the army of humans kept marching and they were also the ones behind the massacre of the Lizardmen. The one leading this human army was Oshima, who didn't care how strong this territory lord's castle, or he himself was. He just used his shield magic to keep advancing by using it like a chivalry and started the attacks by destroying the walls of the beasts. He destroyed a large part just by one strike, and commanded others to keep more attacks coming. After walking for a while, Meek guided them to the city of Maestros. It had been a long time since Meek had seen so many people, but for some reason, she couldn't see any humans around this town here, for which the reason was that this city was home to many endangered species. However, Meek found it all a little strange, because she couldn't see any beastmen around here behind which the reason must be the beastmen and humans' mindsets of remaining crowded with their own races and territories. Now before they proceed, Meek wanted to let Tetsuya know that Lenya had lost her memories and even she hadn't noticed it yet. Lenya felt like that couldn't be the case, but she couldn't answer what she was doing out there in the valley. Not only that, but Meek also informed him that they must not forget about Lenya's habit to add cat phrases to the end of each sentence because it was an accent. Tetsuya was surprised to know that there were events like this out in the real world. Then Lenya started shaking Meek because she didn't want to admit that she adds Naya at the end of every sentence. Although, it was pretty obvious to Tetsuya. Meek dizzily told him that there was also the matter of her own curse which they had to go to other territories, to gather anything useful information to release it. All of these were their problems which they had to look up on now, with money being their biggest priority right now, since they won't be able to do anything without it. Tetsuya said they could just wash some dishes and earn some money, but Meek clearly denied the idea of it because she had a better way in mind to make money. Meek took him to a giant arena, and without wasting any time, she registered him into the very next fight happening. The plan she had in mind was to make him earn some money by fighting in the arena against other fighters of other races. Tetsuya was uncomfortable out there, since he was a pretty calm guy who earned money by working. And also being in front of these many people made him too nervous. The other monsters in the area tried to intimidate Tetsuya since he was weak according to them. One of those monsters used his check level ability and saw his level limit of just one. The monsters took it as a joke that Tetsuya was really here to fight them, and the giant one claimed he was a level 23 who could one-punch Tetsuya. The third monster was even higher at level 30, and after hearing them out, Tetsuya was a bit nervous to see a level difference that big between them. 
although he couldn't afford to be too nervous nor too overconfident right now and stay on alert. He didn't want to ignore the possibility that these guys might be very skillful. Then Meek shouted to say that these guys were just some pushovers he could crush in one go, which didn't exactly make things easier for him but the opposite. The giant monster got engaged to hear Meek's words, and to shut Tetsuya down, he charged first without any warning to hit him with a strong punch. Tetsuya used his hands to block the punch from that guy, and got pushed back all the way to the wall of the arena. The monster left his apologies for going overboard against a level one, whereas Tetsuya said he was fine. It was just that the attack surprised him a little. Meek told him to be more active in the fight and take it easy, whereas Tetsuya was not yet accustomed to feeling relaxed. Meek asked him to perform his lightning skill, because it was a skill humans were well known to be good at. Tetsuya agreed with her, so the next time a giant monster charged at him, Tetsuya just dodged which led the monster to destroy the part of the wall he hit. Tetsuya just got inside by sliding, and once the giant monster was cooling down after hitting the wall, Tetsuya took this chance and unleashed his electric skill upon himself to increase his own attack speed. He landed a critical kick on the eyes of the monster, which made the monster feel quite a lot of pain along with lighting shock. He defeated him in one shot, and now that other fighters got to see him in action, the fish guy attacked him next with his quick spear attacks. Tetsuya didn't have much trouble dodging him because he was faster right now because of electric body, which pissed off the fish even more. Tetsuya closed in pretty easily and gave a strong electric shock to the fish which was super effective to defeat it in one blow as well. Now that two were down, Tetsuya had to defeat only one more but to his surprise, the third one was already charging up a strong attack. Tetsuya asked him if he didn't care about his friends, referring to those he defeated just now, to which the guy stated clearly that those guys were not his friends. The guy released his powerful attack at Tetsuya which created a huge blast on almost half of the arena. After the dust from the blast started to settle down, that guy was relieved to think Tetsuya was blown up from that. But to his surprise, Tetsuya actually dodged it while also saving that giant monster along with the fish by carrying both of them. The third guy got terrified from the sight, as Tetsuya throwed both of them at him which dealt with the third one as well. Tetsuya figured they were easy to beat and win this arena, but when he went to take the rewards for winning the arena, the boss declined because he couldn't believe a level 1 could beat a higher ranking opponent without cheating. Meek tried to argue against it, and make that guy learn that Tetsuya fought fair and square, then the boss asked him if he could show his status to him. Tetsuga realized that the situation could go out of control any moment now, so he just took Meek and left the place. Meek was angry while she claimed that the arena boss stole their prize money, and as they walked, Tetsuya apologized to her since they couldn't get prize money because of his level. Meek said it was fine, and they should now think of doing something about this level thing because if this keeps up, then they would be treated the same like this everywhere else they go. Lenya spoke up that they could go to the guild, and there, they would also get to travel around hunting demons while earning money at the same time. Meek was a bit stiff after hearing the world was traveling, because she knew that the guild wouldn't just allow suspicious people such as then to go into other territories. But her concerns couldn't be reflected right now, because they really needed money for which, they had no choice left but to join the guild. When they arrived there, Meek learned that the guild was sending soldiers to the battlefield nowadays, so if they managed to get into the guild, they might just have the opportunity to visit other territories as well. But for that, they would also need to prove Tetsuya's strength through some early missions. Meek asked Tetsuya if he was okay to go around places with war at his age, to which he replied this much was normal, and he thought that if he could defeat a strong golem, then surviving on the battlefield might not be that tough either. Meek stated they should head further into the guild, then Tetsuya stumbled into someone there. The guy looked like a demi-human with bull appearance, and he felt extremely intimidated by Tetsuya, because he felt like he was some sort of demon with a spiral eye. Then Tetsuya asked the guy politely if he was alright, and when he noticed that Tetsuya was just a human, he told him to not just stand in his way and move to the side. Tetsuya said sorry for that, and then another bull guy came and told the one shouting to not make a fuss and remain calm. Meanwhile, Lenya seemed to be having trouble with Meek doing weird things for no reason. Then a girl came there to check out what was happening, and asked Tetsuya if he was interested in joining the guild. She was a beautiful lady who seemed to be working for the guild, and then he noticed that she seemed to be the only human they saw so far in this city. After the guild worker asked him if he wanted to join, Meek replied to them that they would be joining for sure, while the other demi-humans around them were looking at Tetsuya with wonder, while mentioning that he was the second human here at the guild after the receptionist. The receptionist asked him to follow her, and then she took him to the center of a map portrayed on the ground. 
she said she would explain to them how the guild worked, starting from the main purpose of the guild, to deploy troops to war zones at request of their allies. She told them that they might have to go to the most dangerous battlefields in the world, and when Tetsuya asked out of curiosity if he could go to different territories freely after being registered, the receptionist Lear replied that they could only go to territories assigned with their missions, and in some cases they might travel freely. Meek realized that they just need to choose the missions according to their needs. Then Lear replied that the guild cards which would be provided to them would have a tracking function also. It was done so that adventurers don't travel too far from the mission, and if they do so, the guild takes action against them. Leah continued that first, they would be assigned to the neutral zone for their first mission, which would prove to be a test to see if Tetsuya could be trusted. Now that it was pretty much all the explanations, she asked them to give a small admission test, and asked Tetsuya to let her read their status to help them determine if his level would match guild requirements. She assured him that his status would be kept confidential, and Tetsuya asked Meek if he should do it, and she told him it would be better than nothing. She told him it should be fine with his skill levels, so they started with Lenya's status first. Leah thanked them for cooperation, and started evaluating that Lenya had average abilities, along with some rare transformation skills. Whereas Tetsuya had only level 1 but his abilities could be compared to a superior person with level 60, and the number of skills was just way beyond anything normal. Leah was shocked to see these kinds of stats for the first time, and agreed to pass them in the test. Although, she wanted to know whose teddy was that on the head of Lenya, and it made Meek Mad Tongue thought of as a stuffed toy. But she was not acting normally, and said that Tetsuya was her master. Meek stated to Tetsuya that this was a better choice to go with, because Leah doesn't recognize her as someone who could fight, because her cursed state won't let anyone with average skill to evaluate her level. The only thing that could evaluate her was Tetsuya's identify skill he got from the dragon. Leah tried taking a turn at checking Meek's level, but she couldn't see anything so she thought of Meek as a vessel of a person without original body. Leah apologized for the inconvenience and informed them that now she would charge them for the delivery charges of the temporary guild cards. Tetsuya could feel that might cost him a lot of money, then Meek said she had a secret idea just for times like these. She went ahead and started begging to Leah while saying that they don't have any money on them. Meek cried while repeating for some mercy, and saying that they couldn't get any money because Tetsuya was treated badly for being a level 1, and that was also why they had no place to live. Tetsuya was bummed to see Meek was crying a lot for sure. Meanwhile, others in the place also saw what drama was going on around with Tetsuya being a level 1. Leah felt like she would be in trouble if she let any information about Tetsuya get out. But Meek was so holed up on insisting Leah to do something for them. So Leah answered that she found a special condition for them that she would assign them a mission and manage the money problem from their first reward. Leah claimed it would be fine this time, since they had been short-handed right now, and she could count on them being able to do something having those abilities. Leah handed them their temporary guild cards, which made them temporary members of the guild while allowing them a stay in Maestro City. She assured them that their identities won't be exposed, to make sure they could work normally. After that, Leah asked them to have a look at the map under their feet, indicating that their missions would be shown up with bright dots, among which they could do the choosing for their first mission in the neutral zone. There were surely numerous missions pending to be done out there, which made Tetsuya pretty surprised to think that most of the missions were based on wars. Leah told them the bigger dots they choose, the more dangerous their missions would be, so they must be careful in choosing their missions. Then Meek just went for a big dot with the closest distance. After she picked up the mission, Meek took the responsibility to show them the way to where it was, while Leah tried to make them understand that the mission Meek just chose was too dangerous for them. She asked them to at least let her explain, but Meek stated it was pretty simple since the black cow was the demon they needed to face. Then some other guild members came and asked Leah if that person he saw was the human who joined the guild. Leah replied that he seemed pretty impatient, and moving on, she asked them how it went in the Beastman territory. The chicken head informed her that they were almost destroyed, so now that territory they went to assist was lost and now was just clean and unoccupied. He figured that there must have been fights between neighboring countries at a big scale as well, and currently, all of his doubts were in human territory. Meanwhile, in the human territory at the castle, in the room of one of the heroes, Kaido was passing time by knocking off an ogre girl which was supposedly taken by force from the territories they conquered. He asked the bald guy named Oshima about why he had to go and obliterate that beastman territory along with its people. He replied that he just got too carried away. Then Kaido mentioned they had a shortage of staff so no matter how big territory they win over, they won't be able to occupy it much because of the few humans to manage them. 
he claimed that they were not like the demon king who would destroy the world, but a brave man who just wanted to take back the territory of humans. Oshima asked Kaido if he could just go and use his magic to mobilize corpses to work for them. Kaido stated he did want the whole world to be dominated by humans, after which he claimed they could be friends. But by the idea of friends he just meant to use those people of other territories to his pleasure while ruling over them at the same time. Kaido reminded Oshima how he went and dealt with the ogres and their queen, who were shackled right beside him now. Oshima stated it was boring to have them at his command when he could just kill them easily. Then Kaido told him that if he didn't like his way of doing things, then he was free to fight alone from now on just like Ryuji. But Ryuji was just an odd person so Ashima wanted to remain by Kaido's side. Meanwhile, Kaido asked the fourth hero named Take if he managed to conquer a single territory up until now. Kaido told him that the way he messed up by getting all the soldiers killed in dwarf territory was shameful to even call it any work. Take exclaimed that he had his own methods of doing things, so he didn't care what Kaido had to say. Oshima told them to calm down and said they should keep working like what Kaido said, like their previous world, because it always worked out for them. Then Take went and killed the beast girl standing inside of Oshima, and once her blood splattered around, Oshima was mad to have his favorite toy being killed like that. But he didn't care one moment later since he could just replace her. Kaido called out Take and told him that they should keep following his plan. And Take didn't seem to be happy with that but for some reason he couldn't speak against Kaido. So, when Kaido got out he ranted about how he was always treated like a kid for being weakest amongst those four heroes, so he asked his soldiers that they should go and attack the dwarves again. The soldier under him tried to state that they must not go now, because the dwarves were currently on alert with high-level defenses. They were well known in the world for the best defense, and Take got angry upon hearing that. He asked if the soldier was calling him weak, to which the ogre replied they found attacking the elves' territory. Take asked him for further details, to which the soldier informed him that humans have fought elves a long time ago, and at time, the territory of elves used to be much larger than that of dwarves or anyone else. Take thought that Kaido might acknowledge him if he were to take over the elf territory by himself. He could show just how strong he was and didn't need Kaido's plans to tell him what to do. So, with that said, Take decided to go and take over the elf territory, while their queen Meek was still a stuffed toy. After that, on their mission Tetsuya, Lenya and Meek were having a bit of trouble dealing with the black cow monster, as it was running faster than they could have anticipated. Tetsuya was on the head of the black cow while Lenya was trying to follow it with Meek on her head. However, even Meek didn't expect that black cow would be this tough. She now raised her hands and asked Tetsuya to think about how they could fix this situation. Lenya was barely able to keep up with this black cow, so Meek asked Tetsuya if he could use some of his skill to stop it. He first tried using Fireball, then Acid Shot but none of his abilities had any effect on it. Meek wondered just what were the skills of this monster, then she asked him to try using Meteorite this time. Tetsuya stated it was hard to aim at the bull with a meteor, then he got an idea to try stopping the black cow. He looked ahead of the path and used his Meteorite skill, and the large meteor fell upon the path meters ahead of them. The black cow tried to keep running despite seeing the meteor, and it was really keeping the momentum even with the meteorite hitting its head. Although, even if it wasn't stopped, it got a little slower and it was when the bandage from his hands got loose and Lenya felt the terrible smell again. This smell was surely coming from Tetsuya's hand, while he was looking like a menace with a spiral eye to the black cow. The black cow got intimidated by his dark aura and stopped in its way, so Tetsuya took this opportunity to throw off another meteorite, and managed to kill it this time. He got down from the black cow, Meek asked if he was okay. He replied that he somehow managed there, hearing that she felt relieved. Whereas, Lenya was feeling terrible and asked Meek to talk to her for a second. She asked just what Meek was thinking when she was so impatient about choosing their mission, and got them into this much trouble due to that. She told her to listen to them from now on before actually doing anything, then Tetsuya told her it was fine as long as everything went well. Lenya told him not to feel sympathy for the teacher, then Tetsuya mentioned that his bandage actually got a little loose which instantly made Lenya run away from him. He asked Meek if he could absorb this black cow, to which she replied that the skin of this black cow should be a valuable material, so it was a pretty good chance that the guild would accept it. Meek figured that the guide might also pay them for taking this bull back, and also add special rewards along with it. He asked her how they would actually take something back home, without any tools or anything to get the skin off it. Meek asked him if he could carry it back, and upon taking a closer look, he thought of trying to carry it from the lower part of the black cow. Meanwhile, back at the guild Leah was concerned about something. 
the chicken head guy asked her why she was making a long face, to which she replied it was something related to those newbies. They did complete the mission and were supposed to be here on the way, but there was a problem. The chicken head guy was extremely surprised already after hearing that they actually managed to pull it off, since that black cow was a monster which Guild had been trying to take care of me for a long time, and to pull that off without even proper preparation was really a big deal. He was guessing they would give up on that right away but Tatsuya and others did seem promising in his view now. The little girl beside him thought that it must have been the beast girl who was stronger than she looked. Then Leah told them that it was actually the human guy who was stronger than his appearance. They didn't believe it at first since he had a limit of level 1, but if that was really the case, then others would surely make a fuss about it. After that, some guild workers came to inform them about the return of Tetsuya's group, and they were currently on the main street. The chicken head guy said okay, and Leah asked if they came safely from their mission, to which the goat guy replied that she must go there quickly and see for herself because he wanted her to go and do something about that huge thing which could be seen even from here. Leah looked in that direction, and she was shocked to see that Tetsuya brought the whole black cow by carrying it on his head. They discussed that the human guy, Tetsuya, was really absurd, and more than that, the chicken head guy wondered just how they should treat this situation now. After some time, Tetsuya was sitting on the table, while all the people around him were busy dealing with the corpse he brought along. The cleanup team and other adventurers were dispatched, with some taking up on the work to get the materials off the black cow's body, while adventurers fought the monsters which came after the rotten smell of the black cow. Not only that, but their troubles also included the complaints from all the citizens living around half of the city because of the foil smell spreading everywhere. Tetsuya realized that he surely made quite a big ruckus, even if they were just trying to be considerate by hauling the black cow back to the guild. It worked opposite to what they had imagined. Then the chicken guy came and asked why he was sitting so sad after completing his first mission. The chicken guy and the girl came with a couple of booze to ask if they could join him. Tetsuya said it would be fine, and then Chicken Heads offered the drinks as a present from their seniors. He expressed his surprise to see Tetsuya's capability, and he assured them that the guild would have dispatched a large team to exterminate the black cow later on. So, he was really amazing to deal with it for them. Tetsuya apologized for the trouble he caused instead, and he was feeling very sorry for doing unnecessary things which only made things hard for the guild. The Chicken Head told him to take a look at the guild staff, who seemed to be working hard and enjoying it, which didn't clearly look like it, but he was at least being nice to him. And he stated that whatever Tetsuya brought back was really valuable materials, so the thing that he was able to haul it back was something the guild would be grateful for. He also told Tetsuya that he saved the lives of the guys who would have been sent if Tetsuya hadn't gone on that mission. Tetsuya didn't know these guys, but these guys were really thankful for him bringing back the black cow. They were actually workers who worked in processing valuable materials into armors and other equipment used by other adventurers. They believed that Tetsuya was a good human and said they would help him out whenever he asked them anything from now on. Tetsuya was nervous after getting so much recognition, and with that being said, the chicken head asked him to keep up the good work. The little girl stated she would be looking forward to working with him as well, and after hearing their kind words, Tetsuya felt that their words were like some of his friends he used to have in the previous world. Tetsuya smiled and said he would be happy to be in care of seniors such as them. Then Meek spoke up about her experience, how she had ups and downs in this mission as well, but in the end it was a blooming success. She claimed that her judgment was what brought them here, while Lenya wished Meek would not get carried away too easily like this. Then Meek went out to choose another mission for them, which was already worrisome for them. Leah came and picked up Meek from taking on missions by herself and declared that she herself would be the one to manage their missions from now on. She admitted that their ability was really impressive, but their quality as an adventurer was still had, so she couldn't entrust them with missions of other territories just yet. Leah informed them that they would now do the missions she handpicks for them without any no's, and Meek asked her if she thought they don't have any common sense. Lenya commented that the teacher doesn't have any redeeming features at all, which made Meek realize that her disciple was becoming ill-tempered recently. Meek asked Leah if they would be getting a special reward for bringing back the black cow. Leah took out a paper and gave it to them, which made Meek think that it might be a check, but it was actually a bill for the costs incurred in the uproar they caused by bringing the black cow to the city. Leah said she deducted the special reward from the cost of damages, and after deducting that, Leah informed them that they won't be getting a regular license until they pay it off. 
which meant that Meek and Tetsuya would now have to live with debt. Meek was feeling bad about why she always ends up having terrible luck in everything she does, and Tetsuya tried comforting her by stating that it was good enough since the guild acknowledged his ability. Meek asked him why he was acting so chill, when this bill was actually addressed to him and from all this mess. They figured that getting out of the Valley of Death didn't go like they hoped it would. After that, Tetsuya and his group were in the Samaki Caves, where Tetsuya was on a mission to exterminate the monster moles, and Meek was assigned to the task of collecting mushrooms. Their mission was to collect these mushrooms and Tetsuya stated it was his mission after all so they must do it. Meek asked him to give a thought to their recent missions, which have mostly been just errands. He agreed that she was right about it, because they had done things from destroying goblins' nests, to hunting a pack of kobolds. Meek wasn't happy about it because she wanted to go on tougher missions, fitting for their capabilities. Otherwise the equipment Tetsuya hit would go to waste this way. Tetsuya was absorbing corpses along the way, while recalling the time when he was at the guild and Leah gave him some supplies from the guild. She figured he could use them, since his clothes have been worn out from many battles. She also stated they weren't of that high in value, but for him, they were more than enough. Meek asked if Leah had any weapons in the guild for him, to which she stated that they were currently out of stock for weapons. Meek wasn't happy after hearing that, but Leah couldn't help it since there had been a delay in the distribution of the weapons due to recent uproar. Then Tetsuya got called out by his senior, and he gave him a sword to fight. The chicken head told him that he got that sword as a gift before, but since it was too small for him to use, it would be better for Tetsuya to have it. Tetsuya thanked him for the sword, then Leah examined it and found out it was surely a good quality weapon, so he should use it, while Meek was disturbing Leah with her usual actions. Tetsuya asked Meek just what was she doing again, and now in the present time, he told Meek that they should do these things given to them by Leah, so that they won't repeat the same mistake as Black Cow again. Tetsuya stated it would be better for them to gain some recognition, otherwise they would never get a regular license. Meek admitted it was her fault they had to do these small things, and now that they collected the mushrooms, Tetsuya said they should now head back. Meek told them that Lenya and she would carry the mushrooms with care, while Tetsuya would be on the lookout for monsters. Meek claimed that this mission was really easy, since this cave wasn't even big enough for them to explore much or confront that many monsters. She knew that average monsters won't be that hard for Tetsuya anymore, so she hoped for them to have a challenging mission soon. As they walked out of the cave, Tetsuya sensed something ominous and asked the other two to stop. He sensed that the path ahead of them was blocked for some reason, and there was a guy with a blindfold sitting in chains, as if he was kept there as a sacrifice for a ritual. Tetsuya couldn't understand what was happening there, whereas Meek recognized that this was looking like a demon's altar. Tetsuya thought that they must get that person out of there quickly, but Meek warned him they must not get close to that, otherwise he would get involved in that demon summoning ritual. The altar started to act up, and soon the guy kept there as a sacrifice, split into two with a demon emerging from between that altar. That demon looked really evil and whoever summoned it didn't seem to be around here anymore. Tetsuya was shocked to see a demon for the first time, and he didn't need to be told that this demon was an enemy. He used his identity skill, and learned that this demon named Lesus was real bad news, with a level of 88 with age of around 11,000 years old. Meek warned others that this demon was stronger than any foes they've faced so far, and since she doesn't know much about demons, she wasn't sure why someone would summon such a dangerous being here or with what purpose. However, she thought they still had a chance to escape because demons who are summoned with ritual have a limitation on them, because of which they can't use their full powers. However, Meek gave a heads up that once a person meets a demon, either they have to kill them or get killed by them. With this, Tetsuya's battle against the demon started with a powerful clash between their initial attacks. Meek instructed Lenya to go into her beast mode, after which she tried to push the demon back with her full strength, but the demon just held her leg tightly, making it hard for her to get released. Then Tetsuya used his sword to land a powerful hit on the demon's arm, which made it let go of Lenya's leg. However, the arm of the demon was really tougher than anything he faced so far, so Tetsuya kept hitting it multiple times and eventually aimed for the neck of the demon. However, his sword didn't even make a cut through him at all and when the demon was about to counter-attack him, Tetsuya quickly got back, and then Lenya aimed for the chest of the demon and tackled him as hard as she could. But just like the other's attacks, it had no effect on it. Then Tetsuya asked her to get away from the demon, because he prepared an acid shot and hit the demon's torso with it. He noticed that even the acid shot didn't work, while the demon was ready to attack him even in that condition. Lenya moved in quickly to save Tetsuya from the demon's hit, and while he was getting back with her help, he released a fireball at the demon. 
the demon was strong enough to have no effect or whatsoever from the fireballs at all, and closed in on him without showing any signs of stopping. And eventually, the demon caught up and hit Tetsuya. He got pushed back from that attack and the demon wanted to have a more powerful hit on him. Tetsuya wondered if this demon had any weakness at all. Then Meek asked him that using Meteor might have an effect, but it couldn't be used with the ceiling of the cave being so low. And Tetsuya's hand started to emit some dark smoke out of it, which smelled real bad to both the demon and Lenya. This time the smell was so much that, not only Lenya but even the demon screamed it was hellishly bad. Lenya fainted from the smell, because of which Meek stated this curse was really the worst. Whereas, the demon recognized the origin of this smell, and understood that this smell must be the reason he was summoned here. They called Tetsuya as abyss, and for an unknown reason to Tetsuya, the demon declared that he would no matter what erased him from this world. He planned on crushing not only Tetsuya's body, but his soul as well to the point his entire existence would be annihilated, as the demon used the secret arts to release its full power. Tetsuya felt an immense power from the demon, as it looked like it transformed, but the world release was enough for Meek to understand that this demon had summoned his complete powers for a limited period of time. The demon charged a dark sphere, and Tetsuya could feel that this attack was really dangerous, so much that he won't be able to guard or deflect it even at his full power. So, Tetsuya quickly asked Meek to take Lenya in her hands and threw them out of the way. The demon unleashed its most powerful attack, called the Dark Blast which obliterated even the air particles in the way and soon came into contact with Tetsuya. Tetsuya got a direct hit from that attack, and Meek knew there was no way Tetsuya could have dodged it. She was worried about what might have happened to him, since this attack created a huge hole in these underground caves. The hole in the cave was so big that nobody could have believed he could survive it. Then the demon looked at Meek for a while, but he walked right past her and headed for the cave. Meek wondered why the demon ignored her, which raised her doubts enough to make her go and check it out sneakily behind the demon Lesis. They kept walking into the cave for a while, showcasing just how powerful and deep that attack from the demon must have gone, until they arrived at the end. Meek saw that demon called something ahead of him as detestable, as there lay a knight's armor with most likely Tetsuya inside it. Meek wondered why the knight they encountered in the Valley of Death was here, and more importantly why Tetsuya was inside it. Whereas, from Tetsuya's point of view, his consciousness was sent to somewhere deep inside a dark place where he felt like he was sinking, but for some reason was able to breathe. He had his doubts that he might have died, and started feeling like he had gone through this feeling before. Tetsuya sensed a bad smell around him, as a skeleton of most likely a girl came to him, making him think that he might be in hell. The skeleton replied that they were actually in Abyss, which was a world isolated from reality. Tetsuya flinched after seeing a skeleton talk, and she congratulated him on finally coming here. She called him irregular, and informed him that the King of the Abyss had been waiting for him for a while now. Surprisingly, the King of Abyss looked exactly like the dark spiral eyes, which Tetsuya recalled that he had seen before on his hand. Then some voices of the demon on the outside came, to state he would erase the abyss from this world. While Tetsuya was just trying to figure out what's in front of him, he asked the skeleton what was this curse, and who were they, why was he sinking in this lake. He kept asking for explanations, and when it came to the king of the abyss, he looked at Tetsuya with a sober expression. Then his eyes got wider, showing how happy he was after having Tetsuya finally being able to come down here in abyss. Tetsuya's confusions only increased from this scene. Then the skeleton girl asked him if he couldn't hear the voice of the king yet. Tetsuya was more surprised that the eyeball could actually talk, and now that what the skeleton girl expected from him turned out to be a failure, she asked the king what they should do with this situation. After that, the skeleton girl informed Tetsuya that they were having some troubles right now, and then the abyss started shaking because of the demon hitting Tetsuya on the outside. Tetsuya could see him from here, then seeing the emergence of the situation, the skeleton girl told him that currently the situation was getting worse by the time, and they need to do something about the demon on the outside hitting Tetsuya again and again. The armor on Tetsuya was starting to have some cracks, with Meek being scared of losing Tetsuya. She approached the demon despite how weak she was right now, and tried to stop him but the demon just shook her off like a bug. Meek felt more upset seeing that Tetsuya was about to die if he was alive by any chance. She said out loud for Tetsuya to hear if he could just hurry and wake up. Tetsuya could see and hear what was happening in the real world, and the skeleton girl told him that this knight's armor was barely connecting him to this abyss. Tetsuya thought it must mean he really died, while Abyss King and the skeleton girl examined that the armor won't hold much longer. She told him in a haste that the king of the abyss would explain everything to him later on, and for now, 
Tetsuya must know that everyone here, including her, wanted Tetsuya to live. So, she requested him to use every soul here to strengthen himself and fight against that demon Lesus on the outside. There were about hundreds of dead people's souls laying dormant in this abyss, and all of them wanted to become Tetsuya's strength. But he was feeling a bit off because Tetsuya was not sure about how they came to know about his skill to absorb corpses. The skeleton girl replied that she had no time to explain anything, so he should hurry up. But despite how it sounded, he wasn't sure about absorbing so many corpses of the human beings, and judging from their clothes, they were most likely from Japan and somehow ended up here. The skeleton girl insisted he must do this right now, which put him in a bind since he remembered Meek's words that he must only absorb those killed by him. He thought about doing what this skeleton girl was asking of him, but there was a fear in him of becoming like those necromancers which Meek didn't want him to turn into. Then he heard Meek's voice trying to get the demon Lises to stop attacking him further, and she was crying while screaming out as much as possible. She squealed a lot because she couldn't lose Tetsuya whom she thought of as a family. She kept latching onto Lisa's leg to just stop but nothing worked. Tetsuya could see and hear her desperate attempts to save him, so he couldn't afford to make her worry more about him. So, even if he had to become like those necromancers, he determined himself to do anything just to stop Meek from being hurt for his sake. The skeleton girl could see Tetsuya finally made a decision, and he wondered once before doing it if Meek would be fine with him breaking the promise with her. But since this was the only option he had for now, Tetsuya absorbed the whole pile of souls. Meanwhile, on the outside, Meek determined herself to even come and sit at Tetsuya's armor, thinking that her fluffy body might reduce the blow of the next punch from the demon. She didn't want to just do nothing trying to save Tetsuya, her cherished disciple. Whereas, the demon didn't hesitate at all to punch anyways with his full power, and this time, his punch was stopped. Lesus was surprised that something could stop his punch, whereas Meek was more amazed to make it alive. The punch was stopped by none other than Tetsuya who was finally back to his consciousness, and this time, in an insanely powerful armor with the new powers of Abyss. Meek was relieved to see he was back, whereas the demon Lesus quickly stepped back a few meters away from him. The demon was wary of Tetsuya's powers of Abyss, which were still mysterious to Tetsuya. The demon Lesus hated the foul smell of the Abyss. Lesus charged at Tetsuya to attack him again with anger, but this time, it was Tetsuya who landed an insanely powerful punch right at Lesus' face, while he transformed back to his original form. Meek was surprised to see this new power of Tetsuya which was strong enough to punch back a demon. Whereas, the demon he punched back fell all the way out of the cave which was formed from demon Lesus' own attack before. Lesus was thrown back like a toy, and as he got up, Tetsuya was already here in front of him. Tetsuya raised his hand, while he muttered that now the demon had crossed the limits. He used the powers of Abyss emitting out of his right arm, and soon half of Tetsuya turned into embodiment of the Abyss King itself, which laughed while looking down on this mere demon Lesus. Lesus felt the chills, fronty power behind this smirky eye, but he still attacked out of rage for the Abyss, and his punch didn't even make Tetsuya flinched. Tetsuya was currently really angry since this demon had made Meek cry, so he concentrated on his right arm's symbol and rained down a series of serious punches on the monster's whole body until it splattered the black blood. Tetsuya didn't let the demon have any time to regenerate or heal, so when he punched, many hands from the abyss at his palm emerged and punched the demon in all places, showcasing just how powerful the abyss king was. Tetsuya noticed something was coming out from his hands, which was actually the abyss king's gesture of victory to mock the defeat of the demon Lesus. The demon had an idea that Tetsuya had only drawn out just 1% of the Abyss King's power, so he should try to eradicate Tetsuya right here and now, before he gets more powerful in the future. Demon launched another dark blast at Tetsuya, and this time even if it was the same in terms of power like before, Lesus noticed once the dust was cleared away, that Tetsuya was still standing tall without even a scratch on him. The demon hated Abyss for being ridiculously powerful, and then the time limit of demon's release was over. So, he had to unleash another attack at Tetsuya with whatever was left of him. So once he let out all of his power at him, the whole cave was blasted away. Lesus tried to get away because he knew that he couldn't handle Abyss by himself, especially at his current power level. He wanted to retreat for now, and come back to fight Tetsuya later on. However, Tetsuya hasn't even flinched from the last attack while keeping his eyes on the demon. He didn't want to let the demon get away no matter what, while he used his meteorite skill with the mix of abyss power in it. He was able to summon a much larger piece of meteorite above the demon Lesus, so Lesus took a direct hit from it. 
The meteor created a huge crater on the ground, with Lizus lying in the center of it. Tetsuya went and picked up the demon's body which looked pretty much dead, whereas Miki came out of the cave with Lenya on her back wondering what was happening. She asked Tetsuya if he managed to defeat that demon, while Tetsuya seemed to be absorbing the demon's body. He assured her that he was fine and asked if she was okay. Nick quickly ran towards him and hugged because she had been worried to death for him. Later that night at the guild, Tetsuya mentioned that they couldn't complete their mission to collect mushrooms because of that demon. Nick told him to be glad instead, because no charges were imposed on him for the whole destruction from that fight. Tetsuya stated that the guide people doubted that they encountered a demon, to which Meek said it was normal, since nobody expected that anyone would come out alive from a fight against a demon. Although, there were traces of the ritual left behind, which made the guild investigators believe in some of their story. Lenya said they were at least safe now, then Meek asked him what happened to him back then. She thought he died back there, and after thinking about it for a little, Tetsuya replied that he wasn't sure about what happened either, but the reason they survived was somehow this curse at his hand. He said he heard voices from it, which weren't responding to him at the moment. She wondered what he might be referring to, but since it was still unknown, Meek told him it was dangerous to use it. Enough dangerous that even that high-level demon showed hostility towards that curse while spouting out abyss and all. Tetsuya realized that even Meek hadn't heard about the abyss either, then Meek stated that if only she was in her original form, they wouldn't have to rely on the curse's power back then. Then she had an idea, so Meek asked him if he got a release skill after absorbing the demon Lises, to which he agreed and showed it to her. Meek told him to try using it on her, so that she might be able to return to her original form for a certain period of time. He hadn't thought of using it like this yet, but since both of them weren't sure, they agreed to give it a try. Tetsuya asked her if it would be safe to try, to which she assured him it would be fine because in the case it fails, nothing would happen. So, Tetsuya used his release skill on Meek, and in the next moment, she fell into the bathtub. Tetsuya noticed she really transformed into her original form just like she expected, and this was the first time for Tetsuya to see how beautiful she was. She started jumping around after being back to her original form for the first time in 60 years. Nothing could even begin to express how nostalgic Meek was feeling right now, and she saw her body in the mirror, adoring everything from her face to her hair. Then she turned back to ask Tetsuya why he was acting surprised, and mentioned if he was feeling excited after seeing his master's sexy form. Whereas, Tetsuya replied that her original form of Teddy became too usual to him, that he couldn't think of her in that way. Meek exclaimed that this was her original form, while he stated that her daily behavior also had a different impression of hers. Meek felt like there was no way to explain, so she just got closer to him, to ask how dare he make fun of hers and ruin the mood. Meek said she would make him regret saying that, and when he asked what she meant by regret, Meek reminded him what she said before in the Valley of Death, about having him as her groom. She told him not to take it as a joke, then he mentioned that anyone would have taken a line like that as a joke if it came from a teddy bear. Meek told him that she meant everything she said before, and she wanted him to become his husband for real when she took him to the elf country. She already planned on making out with him as well, but at the same time, she wanted to do it right away because from her logic doing now or later won't be that different. She flirted with him that by the time they'll end up, he won't be able to count the number of stains it would leave. Tetsuya didn't expect she would be this vulgar, whereas Meek was about to do the deed with him and start with the first kiss of her life. But suddenly, she transformed back into a teddy bear and kissed him like that. Tetsuya told her that she should take a look at her right now, which shocked her a lot upon realizing that. Tetsuya told her that his current skill wasn't that much right now, so it would last only for two minutes followed by a cooldown. Now, the situation became weird between the two, because Meek didn't expect herself to be this excited after getting back to her original form. Tetsuya tried to break the silence, but she denied hearing anything and ran out of the tub to the outside. Tetsuya wished she wouldn't have run away like that, because now he was feeling more anxious after thinking how they could have been if things were normal. Next day, they were out on a mission to capture a band of lizardmen thieves in the neutral zone. The bull guy named Koga was accompanying them on this mission and he told them the plan was to wait until they saw all the lizardmen. Then he would subdue them at once. Koga told him not to interrupt in between that process, then he heard the lizardmen moving. It turned out that they directly spotted the boss of the lizardmen thieves, which they can't just let get away. Koga tried to stop the thief but he failed to do so, because the lizardmen boss was much faster on his feet than Koga. Tetsuya quickly thought of another plan and headed out on Lenya's back to run after that thief. Tetsuya sighed as he thought that things would have been easier if Koga left things to them from the beginning, which would have saved a lot of time. 
Meek reminded him that their mission was to capture the Lizardman boss, and he got just the right skill to use in this case. Tetsuya used his absorbent thread on the target, and managed to capture it just like they needed. He was relieved to see they made it, however, Koga also got caught up in his spider threads and he asked Tetsuya to stop absorbing his HP. After the mission, they brought all the captured Lizardman thieves back to Guild, and the chicken head guy Choki was glad to see Koga was useful in this mission. A little in the negative way by making thieves almost get away, then Koga hesitantly stated that his juniors also did a good job. Tetsuya just accepted it with a half thank you, after which Koga asked him not to get carried away. Choki stated to Koga that he shouldn't trouble the juniors for his mistakes, which made them start a quarrel among themselves. Tetsuya stopped them and said it was all thanks to Koga that he managed to catch the boss lizardmen, and hearing praises for himself made Koga happy as a child. Tetsuya added that the boss just let that monster get away, so that Tetsuya could catch it without trying to take credit for himself, even if he could have caught him if he wanted. Koga got flattered from the praises, so he praised back Tetsuya for being so honest, which he wasn't, and agreed to accompany him in the next mission as well. Whereas, Meek was just having fun after seeing how simple Koga was to be convinced, and Koga told Tetsuya he could work under him once he got a regular license. Leah came and asked Koga to not trouble the newbie too much, and besides that, he should go for the next mission on elf territory. Koga stated he forgot to leave the night, since the elf territory seemed to be in a bad situation right now. Meek was surprised to hear that and asked Leah what she meant by that, to which Leah replied that elves currently seem to be under attack by humans. Meek got worried for the elves, while Choki said the humans were currently too active in the wars recently. Leah mentioned that this was happening more frequently, because of so-called heroes which were the major parts of their armies. Tetsuya was surprised to hear the word hero, and then he heard the girl with Chiko, named Hito saying that it wasn't sure yet who was that hero, or even if it was a warrior or strategist. Koga stood proudly as he said he would crush anyone that would come by his way. Choki mentioned it was really bad for a fight to happen between humans and elves, which had happened once before in a long time ago. He stated that there was a great war 60 years ago just like this one between elves and humans, so now it wasn't sure what was the reason this time. But the Great War actually happened when humans who aimed to conquer the world started to invade other territories. It was said that they had always been hungry for territorial wars, and at that time, the humans had the largest territory and strength in the world. They managed to conquer most of the territories in the blink of an eye. However, the only race to manage defeating the previous human invasion that time was the elf race, which had a pretty reliable commander at the time. Choki continued to say that the Elf Queen at that time was said to be a rare genius with an outstanding wisdom, magic power, and strength. She also managed to gather the survivors from other races and defeat the humans with whatever she had at her arsenal. Meek asked Leah if she knew anything else about that Elf Queen, to which she replied that the Elf Queen was said to be beautiful, cheerful, and very popular amongst elves at that time. But Choki said that according to his grandfather, she was rude, loud, and had a very bad temper instead. The praises made Meek happy, while the negative ones made her mad and faced Chico. Chico asked her why she was getting angry, then Leah had to stop her. Leah also added that the current elf queen had a serious personality, but they seem to be struggling to fight the humans and have been losing their lands slowly, which would create more chaos for elves. Lenya wished that this fighting could be stopped and they could get along instead, because she couldn't travel carefree in these wars. Everyone heard Lenya saying it, and figured that she was surely a positive thinker. But even the idea of making war disappear from this world didn't seem to be possible with the existences such as demons, Kaido or other heroes, it even abyss, through which there would be one that would soon climb the ladder of the strongest which nobody would have been able to foretell. Later around the time of the dawn, Tetsuya was training his sword swings while aiming for his 10,000 daily swings with Meek supervising him. He asked Meek she seemed to be worried about the elf territory for quite a while, but Meek was immersed in thoughts that a hero, according to her, was an existence that could only be summoned from another world through a secret art. She wasn't sure if any human could have known that secret art, and if they did, then elves would have a tough time against them with all the burden falling on a certain someone she cared about. She hoped nothing bad would happen, and soon Tetsuya finished his final swing. He had a pretty much good idea that the elf territory problem must be related to those heroes he saw alongside him at the time he was summoned, while knowing how strong they were. Meanwhile, Meek told him that they need to prepare as well for this elf war. She asked him if he completed his training, and once he agreed, Meek told him to try using the Dark Blast skill he got from that demon Lesus. He mentioned it might cause trouble since they were near the city right now, but she said he should test it out because that would soon become his main skill. 
he agreed she was right about it, but testing it out at night time was making him have some doubts. Neek insisted that nobody would complain about it, and he should try aiming it in the sky. He figured that her teaching was as sloppy as usual, but still agreed to charge up his dark blast by concentrating his power in a sphere. After which, he aimed it into the sky and took some time. Neek asked why he wasn't shooting it yet, to which he replied it was some sort of charging skill, so it appeared that charging would take time because the skill level was currently low right now. Neek stated that the demon before also took some time charging it as well, so after he charged the sphere, she asked him to shoot it at the moon thinking that he had to destroy it. Tetsuya obeyed his teacher's instructions and released the dark blast into the sky and some pupil from the town actually noticed it. Tetsuya looked like he still needed to train more to make it as strong as those demons, and Meek told him that he might need to charge it a little more only. Suddenly, loud sounds of alarm started ringing in the city which led him to believe it was his fault. Meek said it wouldn't be the case, so they decided to go inside and find out what it was. And the moment they entered, an emergency broadcast was announced to the whole city that all the elves in the Maestro's city were required to come to the guild immediately because their territory was in danger and needed as much help as possible. The guild soon got crowded with many adventures, with mostly being the elves who asked them just what happened to their hometown. Leah told everyone to wait until everyone arrives, while Tetsuya was wondering along with the crowd about this situation as well. Meek stated there was no way elves would lose to humans, but she wanted to confirm the situation so eagerly that she started to crawl down between the legs of people to reach ahead. Tetsuya followed her through the crowd as well until he saw a surprising sight of Leah being there in a towel means she came from between her bath, given the emergence of the situation. Leah figured that all the elves had arrived by now, and they asked people to call back the elves which were in the middle of quests as well. Tetsuya understood this must be serious, then Meek asked Leah what happened. Leah told her to come back later because she was busy with something important now, but Meek wanted to hear right now that she was here, so she started hanging on to Leah's stomach, while asking just what was the elf situation right now. Leah asked why she was worried about the elf territory, and thought Meek was just playing around at a time like this. Meek kept asking for the report Leah had in her hand, but Leah couldn't waste any time like this. Then, a big miraculous wardrobe malfunction happened, as the towel on Leah fell down because of meddling by Meek. Tetsuya shouted just what she was doing, whereas Leah got extremely angry with a smile. She hit Meek real hard while telling her to calm down. Meek was clearly not hurt by that punch of hers, and now since the wait was over for the news to be announced, Leah contained in just a short while showing everyone a map. She told them that this map was showing the current situation of the elf territory which showed that three of the elves' castles were won over by the humans, with more than half of their territory gone. The next target of those humans was going to be the Braxel Castle, and if that were to be taken down, the only one to remain would be the castle of Capital City Falasian. While Lenya was helping out flattening the unhurt Meek, Meek couldn't think of how elves could have lost so badly against humans. One of the elves also said the same, since she couldn't think of why it happened too quickly, even if they didn't have their previous queen. They wondered just what changed the humans, then Leah stated it must have been because of the power they gained, which made them first go for the beast folks, and now the elves. For many people, the defeat of the beast folks was a big deal because they were known to be the strongest for being offensive. Elves asked Leah if it would be okay for them to return back to their homeland, to which agreed the guild would be fine and they could cancel all of their currently ongoing quests to return. However, she wanted to warn them once that they were in a difficult situation so remember to stay on alert, since their enemy humans had mysterious powers, especially the ones who are called heroes. Meanwhile, in the Braxel Castle of Elf territory, there seemed to be signs of war already with piles of bodies laying waste everywhere. In all that, a lady was walking around casually, and then went to the courtroom of the castle where the hero, Take, was sitting at the throne he just won over. He told the lady she was late, to which she replied that she had been busy creating these undead slaves for herself with the help of things given by Ashima. Now they won't have to worry about not having enough pawns under them, and assured Take that he could take as many of these pawns he needed. Take didn't like her praising Ashima in front of him. But that being aside, he couldn't deny losing a lot of his soldiers. So, Take agreed to take some of them and depart for the next place right away. He wanted to destroy the elves and move on to his next target. The lady under him seemed to be pleased with his actions, that he was being serious about retaking land for humans while others were enjoying themselves. She maintained that recapturing territories was a part of humans ruling the world. Then she suggested Take to take Oshima with him. But this came out as bad to Take, since he felt like she just compared him to that bald head. He swung around his sword in anger which cut the castle, 
and claimed that he really hated being compared to others. Meanwhile, Tetsuya was walking around witnessing many other elves trying to figure out how to go on about the war. Meanwhile, Meek was seeing elves trying to form strategies and she wanted to be a part of it. She told the elves to wait, and then others asked her why she was meddling with their time when they were already short on it. Meek couldn't word it out, because she doesn't think she won't be able to help them out in any way because of her current body. She felt powerless even if she wanted to save her hometown, which was in a predicament. Tetsuya sensed what she might want, so he quickly spoke up to Leah that he also wanted to go to the elf territory. Leah asked the chief about what to do in this situation. Then he replied that he would try to ask the guild master. Tetsuya went as far as bowing down to request. Then Leah told him to raise his head and allowed him to go there as an emergency quest. Meek was happy to hear that. But then Leah said they needed to have an adventurer with a regular license with them to act as supervisor. Tetsuya wondered whom to ask to accompany him. But before that, other elves asked him why he wanted to go to our territory when he was a human himself. They thought he might betray them, and even if that were not to be the case, they couldn't be sure after what happened 60 years ago. Not only that, but the elves also didn't like one thing Tetsuya did that hurted them, which was to give the name Meek to his familiar. They thought it was disrespectful towards their previous queen, unaware of the fact Meek was herself. He asked Meek if they should convince them by using release on her, to which she replied it might backfire, because it was hard to believe they would trust her words in just two minutes, instead of thinking of her as an illusion. Also, she didn't want to cause them to panic by showing herself, and there was also this problem that she had been exploiting the familiar benefits of the guild. Because if it were to be known that she wasn't a familiar of Tetsuya, Meek would be sent off or in the worst case scenario get arrested. Meek had done so many things as Teddy, which could get her arrested for sure if she were to be known as an elf, who conducted various indecent acts. Then Meek went and asked Leah if she could introduce someone to them, to which she replied that she was currently too busy for that, so they would need to resolve it by themselves. Meek doubts anyone would just agree to go with temporary adventurers like them, except Choki or Hito, who weren't here. Then someone came to the guild looking for something they forgot by mistake, and this person turned out to be the bullhead Koga. Koga asked why this place was filled with so much ruckus, and after seeing him, Tetsuya got an idea to convince Koga to accompany them to the elf territory. Later on, they arrived at the Braxel castle and saw that it already seemed to be occupied, and for some reason, full of zombies. They wondered just what might have happened here, to which Meek replied that humans took their corpses and used necromancy on them to make them as their slaves. She said this was how they increased their forces, and seeing that there were no elf corpses present around them, Meek figured they must have been taken for being used as a zombie further, including the ones in the graveyard. Seeing all of this made her blood boil to the point she hated humans a lot. Except one, Tetsuya, who listened to what she always told him. Tetsuya felt a little guilty because he was yet to tell her about the abyss. Then Meek asked Lenya if she didn't feel anything for those zombies of the beast men. She looked at them properly, and stated that she didn't feel anything for them, and informed her that this human form of hers with a demi-human face was her original form, which was no way similar to those furry faces of the zombies. Then Koga told them that they should now think of how to conduct from here on. Meek stated that they need to investigate the Eleven Capital now, and since the forest was too deep, they would need to pass through this Braxel castle to reach the capital quickly. So, Meek made sure to warn everybody it won't be easy, then Koga claimed that if all they needed was to conquer this castle, they were lucky to have him here. Koga started walking saying that he would beat all the zombies in no time, then Meek stopped him to say something. But Koga exclaimed that he was the one here with a regular license in this team. He told them that they should follow his lead, while inside, he just wanted to boss around the underlings. Meek agreed with him while saying that she was expecting Koga to be a great boss, who would listen to what their underlings had to say. Koga felt like he was going to make a mistake, so he quickly changed to ask her what she had to say. Meek was successful in manipulating simple-minded Koga, and so, she started saying that conquering the castle was necessary, but they needed to conserve their strength as much as possible while doing so. Her reasoning made sense because they would need to fight a greater human army later on, and Koga understood that if he lost energy before that, then he wouldn't be praised as a hero who defeated those humans. Koga asked Meek if she had any plans, then she said there seemed to be someone who was controlling these slave soldiers, so they should simply infiltrate the castle and defeat the person controlling them. Tetsuya wasn't that good at infiltration, so he asked Meek if he could go and lure the slave soldiers, so that Meek and others could infiltrate easier. He knew that he was the best person to be a decoy, and Meek was also aware of that. She agreed with him to lure those zombies, while Rest would infiltrate. Koga asked when would get the chance to shine, 
Then Meek looked at his dumb smiling face, then said it should be obvious to him that he would be the one to defeat the boss who manipulates these zombies. Tetsuya requested Koga to take care of Meek and Lenya, which felt really good to Koga from being relied upon. He happily agreed to take care of his underlings, meaning the rest of them. Then Tetsuya asked Koga to not include him because he was going right now. Koga agreed and asked Meek to guide the way to them. Meek informed Tetsuya she would go and make an infiltration path for them. So now all Tetsuya needed to do was to be real flashy with his skills and just lure as much attention to the zombies as possible. First off, he started with the zombies on the walls and rained down a bunch of fireballs at them. He kept shooting multiple fireballs until he covered the whole bridge with the hell for those zombies. And to finish off the zombies which somehow survive while still burning from the fire, Tetsuya launches a whirlwind sword slash to cut them into halves. A large beast zombie appeared suddenly and attacked Tetsuya from behind, which managed to block in the nick of time with his sword. The beast zombie started charging for another attack, and Tetsuya knew he wouldn't be able to dodge this one, so he just used his corpse absorb skill to absorb this corpse. Then a hand came from the crack in the floor, and that zombie caught Tetsuya's legs to stick him down. Tetsuya didn't expect them to come at him from under the ground, and before he knew it, they covered him from all angles. Tetsuya quickly charged his fireballs and attacked all the zombies with them in a spreading manner and then he crushed each of the close ones with his bare hands. Tetsuya sighed as he panicked a few moments ago from that ambush, and figured that he needed to be more careful while absorbing because it left him defenseless. The more zombies he killed, the more started coming at him, and Tetsuya was ready to take on all of them. Meanwhile, Meek and Rest managed to progress safely because there was nothing in their way. Koga asked Meek how come a teddy bear was too knowledgeable about this place, to which Meek said details were not necessary right now, and they should keep advancing. She told them that the room she was leading them to had the best view of the castle and its surroundings, so whoever was controlling those zombies must be inside there. They agree and Koga quickly rushed into the room without thinking, while declaring that all the humans here would soon met their end. The soldiers asked just who they were and how did they manage to get in. Meek realized that, that these soldiers had a device which controlled the slave soldiers. Now, like she said before it wasn't going to be easy, the soldiers ordered a couple of undeads to charge at them. Koga went ahead to defeat all of these undeads in one go, and he did have quite the power to at least average enough to deal with these zombies. Koga worked alongside Lenya to fight these zombies off, and then Koga realized that he must quickly deal with these zombies and go for the one controlling them. Then another large zombie attacks the Koga, and he manages to block it with his weapon. Meek goes and sits on the head of a guy with a crystal, and asks Lenya to quickly destroy the crystal. Lenya came to the rescue as she used the soldiers at her foothold and took a leap from there. Lenya straightforwardly aimed for the crystal and landed by smashing it with her kick. The soldiers couldn't believe they were defeated in this way. The zombies started to disappear from all around the castle, including the parts where Tetsuya was luring them. He understood that the gang had just done their task, and inside the castle, Lenya and Meek were proud of themselves for completing their plan successfully. Meek figured she was the MVP now, and the soldiers who got their crystal crushed became enraged at Meek. They directed their anger at her, and threatened her that their swords would surely cut them for this. But by the time before soldiers could even make a move, Tetsuya arrived there and asked others if they were okay. Koga told him that they managed to emerge victorious here, and surprisingly, they learned from these soldiers they defeated in a minute, that the rumors about the heroes being there were true. The soldiers informed them only one hero was involved in conquering these elf castles, while the soldiers were there just to hold down the forts. Tetsuya asked Meek what she was doing with those soldiers, to which she replied she was in the middle of an interrogation and by each question she asked, she learned how evil these humans were. She told Tetsuya that he was surely a good human, unlike these pigs from the same race. Then one of the soldiers recognized Tetsuya and shouted out why he was taking the side of that teddy bear. The soldier asked Tetsuya that he should be on the side of the humans, then Koga told him to shut his mouth, and don't even try to order around his underling. Then one of the other soldiers spoke up that Tetsuya was really the one they've seen before, because they were present when Tetsuya, the defective one amongst those heroes, was summoned, with a level limit of one. Meek, Lenya and Koga were surprised to hear that Tetsuya had seen those heroes and already knew about them. The soldier was so shocked that he stood up with other tied-up soldiers in the air, and the fact that Tetsuya was alive was more surprising even after being thrown into the Valley of Death. Tetsuya recognized that these soldiers were the ones who threw him off into the valley, while those soldiers called him trash again for becoming a pet of Koga even if he was summoned alongside other heroes. But hearing all the nonsense from these guys made Koga and others mad, so they kicked these soldiers out of the window, 
and they fell down from a non-survivable height just like how they threw Tetsuya. Tetsuya was moved to see his friends take his side, because Meek hated to see her disciple being ridiculed, while Koga didn't like that they had mouthed his underling. Tetsuya looked at their faces, while thinking that they must now want some explanations from him. He told them that those soldiers were right about him being one of the people, who got summoned from another world. Tetsuya stated that he kept quiet about it because he didn't think it would be good to talk about it. Meek realized the reason why Tetsuya didn't know much about this world from the start, so she assured him not to worry and he didn't need to feel guilty about it. She told him that the only thing important here was if they could trust him or not, and after living with him for quite some time, Meek knew that he was a person they could put their trust in. So, no matter what, nothing would change the fact that he was her disciple. Tetsuya thanked her for the trust, and then she stated that she might not have believed his other world story if she hadn't heard it from someone else like those soldiers, and her doubts that the humans using the secret art of summoning from another world was actually true. Meek asked him what those other heroes summoned alongside him looked like, to which Tetsuya replied that there were a total of six heroes who got summoned from another world, of which only four of them became heroes. He informed them that the only thing he knew about them was that all of those four had a bad attitude, with one of them having a level limit of 125. Now that Tetsuya recalled back about that day, he wondered what might have happened to the girl who also came along with him and didn't become a hero. Meek heard his story, and after analyzing him and what she heard from those soldiers after interrogation, she understood so far that there was only one hero who attacked the elves with a level limit of 93. She knew that to save the future of elves, they must somehow manage to beat this level 93 hero. She had hopes that Tetsuya would be able to fight off against that monster, but it would only be known in the Phalasian capital later on, where the current queen of elves was standing on the castle looking at the way from where there would be a human army coming anytime soon. Her general Ramak came to her to report the current situation to your highness Saku. She agreed to hear the report and Rama informed her that they've been doing their best to gather all the remaining troops to intercept the human army. But from the looks of it, the preparations might take around four days. She claimed they should be able to arrive in time before humans would attack them. Because so far, the human army just got out of Braxel City. Not only that, but they've assigned some of the fighter elves to slow down the marching of humans. She told them that so far, from the investigations of the previous castles, the castle defenses of everyone so far were rendered useless against the human known as Hero. Saku stated that they had only one countermeasure under these circumstances, that they must gather all the army in a wide plain area so that humans' army won't be able to react that quickly to the magic attacks from elf that would be rained down surprisingly. She claimed that they might surely be able to utilize their magic power to the fullest, but Saku knew that this might not be enough. She said sorry to Rama for not being enough as the queen, and even under her rule, many people suffered because of her incompetence. Rama said it was fine, and even if Sake was not good at warfare like the previous queen, she was still doing her best to fulfill the role of queen as best she could. Saku apologized for being weak for a moment there, and now got focused on the main fight that she should relate the news to everyone else. That, the next battle would determine the future of the elf race, and if they lose it, the elves might be done for the rest of their lives so everyone should do whatever they could in this war. She formed strategies for hours alongside Rima and other elves, and assigned where magicians, defenders, and offensive people would be stationed for most effectiveness. Meanwhile, in the forest, the human army seemed to be marching forward while suffering casualties from the surprising elf soldiers placed in some spots along the way. When the day of the battle arrived, Saku and Rima could see the army of humans marching towards them, and they were coming straight this time as if they wanted to say they don't need any strategies. Saku wants to use this against them, so she signals the magic unit to start the chanting and once the human army enters their attack range, they must go at it like they wanted to end this war in one shot. She reminded them again, elf future was at stake. And this then Saku informed Rama once the army entered the range. However, they noticed that from the whole human army, only one of them advanced in their attack range. Saku was shocked to hear that, so she quickly took a check on his level, and learned that he had a level limit of 93. And without a doubt he must be that rumored hero. Saku quickly asked Rama to engage the magic attacks directed at the hero. Rama asked if that would be alright, since using all of their attacks on one man might be like playing into the hands of humans. Saku told her that they couldn't afford to let that hero come closer before once he does, they won't have a chance of winning this at all. So just like she commanded, all the units centered their attacks on the hero Take while being careful not to hit their allies. Take was rained down with thousands of magic attacks all at once but despite whatever he was attacked with, Take didn't show any signs of slowing down and marched ahead 
despite magic attacks coming at him consistently. And when Take got closer to the elves, told them to stop because Take had entered a close range. The first wave of the attacks was now over, so she asked them to prepare the second wave right away. Whereas the rest of the human army saw it as their chance to march forward with the army of undeads before the elves finished chanting. The undeads approached the elves' capital at a fast speed, and Ramau ordered the defense unit to stand on guard, while telling the rest to attack as soon as they finished their chant. Saku commanded everyone to not falter no matter what in this time, while the undeads were being beaten up by the elves. Take was still keeping up his marching as if he didn't care about what was happening around him at all, and eventually he noticed the elf queen Saku once she got in his sight. Meanwhile, Saku was acting as a healer and asked everyone who was injured to get healed by her quickly, while asking the attack unit to slowly keep their distance from the approaching humans while retreating. Then Sak noticed that the hero was going for an attack on her from above, and while Take was launching his attack, Rima stepped in to save her with her defensive shield magic. Take's attack impacted on a large area at once, and once he was done, Rima and whoever tried to protect Saku were heavily injured. Take asked Saku directly if she was the boss of these elves, which meant that if he just killed her, then this territory would be his. Take was getting sick of having to do so many things, so he just wanted to get this over with by killing her right away. But when he was going to attack her, another fire attack came from another direction at him. Take had to use his arm to dodge this surprise attack, and he thought that all those soldiers were useless if he still got interrupted by someone. Then another attack grazed near his head, and the attack which came at him a moment ago was from a human, who also managed to snatch the Queen of Elf Saku from in front of him. Tetsuya and others finally made it in time to save Saku, and the war continued. Some moments ago when the war progressed, Meek and others arrived at the edge of a cliff through a short route they had to take to arrive here quickly. She witnessed that the chaotic war had already begun. Meek was hoping that if the war hadn't begun already, then she would have made Tetsuya use his meteor, or dark boss to land a surprise attack on enemies. But if they were to do it now, it would get even else caught up. She switched to plan number two, that they would have to go through and charge the enemy's army from this cliff. She asked Lenya to switch her form, and the plan was to ride her back to jump down there safely. But unfortunately they seemed to be getting too heavy because of one person, Koga. Meek asked him to get off because of overweight. Koga told her that he couldn't go down a steep cliff like this by himself, but since they were in a hurry, Meek told him to just take the wally around it and meet with them later. After saying that, Meek quickly left for down the cliff, while Koga shouted that they were supposed to be his underlings, not the other way around. Meek and others progressed down at a rapid rate, and he asked her if she was sure about plan number two to work. Meek replied that this plan was based on holding the human army long enough to let the elven army to retrieve, and then have Tetsuya use meteor on them. And to accomplish that, they must go to the commander of elves, the Queen Saku. Tetsuya asked her if the Queen of Elves would really listen to a bunch of strangers showing up out of nowhere, to which Meek replied it would work just fine, because the Queen was a smart girl. Tetsuya asked Meek if the current elf queen was someone she knew, to which she replied that the queen of elves was smart and a good decision maker because Saku was actually her sister, Saku Samafas. Meanwhile, it was getting wild down there for elves, because they were having harder time holding off the undeads. Then suddenly, the undeads started to be defeated at a rapid rate, because Tetsuya entered the battlefield by that time. And while they were at cutting off any undead in their way, Meek asked him to find a beautiful elf who looked just like her. Tetsuya asked if she was really asking him to find a here-faced elf like hers. Then she shouted at him find someone looking similar to her human form he saw before. Tetsuya stated it would be hard for him to find a certain elf out of these many people in the battlefield. While the elves on the attack unit had started to notice a human attacking back on the human army. Then Tetsuya noticed at some distance ahead, and Meek as well that he saw two shadows ahead of them. Meek looked carefully there and recognized that it was exactly her sister, and the guy which was about attacked just be the hero. Meek asked Lenya to quickly charge towards that location, and they made their way as fast as possible to reach the elf queen in time, while killing any undead common in their way. Meek was desperate to reach there timely, whereas Tetsuya kept looking there and recognized Take right away from a single glance. He quickly started charging fireballs and showered them as fast he could on Take. Now back in the present, Take was trying to understand just what happened, and who was this guy who got in his way. The elf queen asked Tetsuya to quickly let her down, then Meek told her to forgive them for acting so disrespectfully. But given that it was an emergency, Meek told Saku that they came here on an emergency quest from the guild. 
Lenya showed Saku the guild license which made them trust their words, but she still had some doubts. Meek agrees she must have a lot of questions to ask, but they don't have time to answer because of this critical situation. Saku was amazed to think that these guys were really thinking of pushing back a hero with a level limit of 93. Meek assured them that she could count on them without suspicion, and asked her to look up in the sky without arousing suspicion. Saku looked up and saw a large meteorite coming down, and Meek filled her in while hiding her own identity, saying that this meteor was the skill of the guy who just saved her life. Meek continued to tell her to get everyone in her army to retreat back into the castle upon her signal, whereas Saku couldn't believe the one saving her life was a human. Saku thought it was too soon for her to process that some members of the guild showed up only to ask her to put her trust in a human whose race was trampling over her territory. But since she knew there might be something trustworthy behind their words, she decided to agree with Meek's plan. Meek thanked her for the reinforcement, and Meek also thanked her for the quick decision-making there. Meanwhile, Take asked Tetsuya why he was getting in his way despite being a human. Then Tetsuya mentioned it had been a long time since they met, and it seemed that Take didn't remember Tetsuya at all. Take declined knowing someone like him, while Tetsuya remembered it all as clear as day. Then one of the soldiers under Take informed him that Tetsuya was that defective product with level 1 who got summoned alongside them by mistake. Take still doesn't recall that because he never cared about the weaklings. But either way, Take wanted Tetsuya to step aside from his way, because if he didn't then the only conclusion for him was to be killed. Tetsuya clearly denied from moving because he was indebted to elves, so he would never abandon them. While he pointed out in the sky for Take to look above at the giant shadow looming over all the humans' army including the undeads, as they wondered just how the hell in the world was a meteor this big was falling down upon them. 